Welcome to Friday Night Football tonight on The Pep Zone. I'll be your host tonight, Mr. Jason Seip. I'm normally the tech director for the Friday Night Pep Rally, but for tonight, I'm going to hold down and have you guys take a look at three games that we got going on around Riverside, and they're already all going on, and here's the action. Andy, let's go ahead and go up to the try box to take a look and see what each of the three games are that we actually have for you. Up in your upper left-hand corner, you have Ramona versus Norda Vista. Kickoff is about to get underway. In the upper right-hand corner, you're going to have Vista Del Lago taking on Riverside Poly. Uh, and then down in the bottom tonight, we have a guest game. And that game is brought to you uh, by courtesy of uh, Teen Vision uh, t TV 16 over there. Uh, we're going to have Rancho Verde uh, playing against Orange Vista. Um, and you can see those games are just now all getting up, uh, getting up and off the ground. Uh, we're going to start tonight by heading out and heading over to the Ramona versus Norda Vista game. That is, of course, Riverside TV's game of the week. Uh, we'll then kind of pop over and, and see what's happening, the Vista Del Lago game and then Poly game, um, and then over to Rancho Verde and Orange Vista. For now, though, uh, let's see if we're going to go ahead and get kickoff going over at Ramona versus Norda Vista. And stand by to hear from Gasol Hassan and Jeff Gorham, who have the call. Cody Shiner back deep along with Jake Valenzuela for Ramona. So Ramona gets the ball first here in this Week 10 River, River Valley League matchup. The Rams, 5-4, and 2-2. Two and two. We mentioned no tiebreakers for them. They'll need to effort a win here tonight. Shiner from about the 9, fumbles the football, fumbles it forward to the 14, picks it up, and then he'll spin up over the 20 and be stopped right around the 23-yard line. Shiner for about a 14-yard return and first and 10, Ramona. And And on back, we're taking a look at Vista Del Lago and Polly. The Bears are down inside the red zone against Vista Del Lago. Looks like it's going to be third down and goal to go. We have J.R. Reed and Nick Rice on the call heading over there. A corner blitz came through. They saw that pitch coming. So he was stopped immediately. Rancho was pretty lucky they were able to hang on to the ball because they had two guys in the backfield. Right. First quarter and march all the way to the goal line. They had a decision to make, fourth and goal from the two. Certainly going for it would give the, uh, the fans something to cheer about, but it looks like they'll settle for the field goal. Well, they've got a really good kicker here. Right. Samoski has a really good leg, so this should be somewhat routine for him. Talon Samoski has been almost automatic on PATs. It's basically that distance, yep, there you and go. he drills it. The impressive drive here to start off this football game, so you can't fault him for that aspect. I mean, they had a nice uh, mix of different play calls for both running and passing. Chewed up a lot of time off the time clock, so they've shown that they have the capability to control the line of scrimmage here. A 19-yard field goal for Talon Samoski. And with 6.32 left in the first quarter of this one, the Bears take We're the head over to Rancho Verde lead. versus Orange oh. Vista. The Mustangs are up 7-0 currently on the Coyotes. They're down just inside the 20-yard line. Driving right now are the Mustangs against the Coyotes. Let's check and see what's going on there. Burpee under center in the shotgun. Going over the top and for Orange. Out. And we got a penalty flag. Let's see, and he threw it in the area that usually is um, interference. Orange seems to think it is, that's for sure. We have um, Anthony Himes covering. And we got pass interference called against Orange Vista, which will give Rancho the ball. Pretty close, I believe half the distance on this. Let's see. Which would be an automatic, should be an automatic first down also. Like so at the nine yard line, automatic first down. So now this is Dylan Riley territory. This is Dylan Riley specialty territory. Rancho Verde in a tight formation. Oh, they split out two receivers. Correction. I was looking down instead of at the field. And uh, oh. Ooh, Riley met quickly. Penalty on Rancho. 
And he paid for that with a big hit from number five, Alofa Miguel. Alofa Miguel, you hear his name called a lot today. You'll also hear, they say, uh, Magale. Lisi, I'm sorry, Lisi Magale. Uh, the, the two linebackers uh, who are ferocious linebackers, just always on the attack, running downhill, uh, and just ferocious hitters. Big third and 12 coming up here for Rancho Verde. Third and 12. They were trips right. I'm sorry, trips left. Now they brought this receiver in the slot right. Shotgun. Play action. They tried a little bubble screen out to um, Jerry's midget. And it was incomplete. It didn't set up quick enough. It seemed like it took a long time for that to really get developed. Brings up fourth down. Now, do you kick? I think you absolutely take the points in this position. Agreed. Here we go. And I believe the kicker is coming out. A game that's going to be this close, this tight, uh, three points could be the difference. So I think you take those three points when you get the chance, especially this early in the game. Raul Omedo, the kicker for Rancho Verde, is lining up. Kick is up. Got plenty of leg. No it's good. no good. It was wide, off to the right. Wide right. So now Orange Vista has ridden that wave of emotion. They seem to have settled in defensively. Yeah. Uh, Dylan Riley had some We're going to go ahead and jump back on over to the Ramona and Norta Vista game right now. The Rams look to be uh, heading down the field and driving pretty well. Just got onto the other side of midfield. The game uh, that you just got done watching, Rancho Verde Mustangs are up 7-0 on the Orange Vista Coyotes. Right now, this game has no score, and the Rams are, are uh, driving. Let's go ahead and hop back in and listen to Gasol Hassan. He flings to the outside, complete to Shiner. Nice little move by Shiner, weaving up over the 40, down at about the 37-yard line. Give him about seven yards on the catch and run. If you're Ramona, you just got to just play this kind of football. Shiner playing for the injured Royce Mendoza. Mendoza will play defense, but a hand injury kind of prevents him from being effective as a receiver. Another third and short here for Ramona. Acosta under pressure. He'll fling to the outside, complete to Lerba. It'll be short of the first down. Showing up and making the hit, Isaac Costello. First man there was Brandon Bastidas. Fourth down coming up. They have a decision to make. Oh, they're going to go for it. I'm telling you right now, they're not bringing out the kicking team. This is... So Lerma is kind of being the safety valve here. Here comes the pressure. Nice, nice job, little jump throw. And the tackle, as we said, and they're going to go for it. You're correct, Jeff. Fourth and one from the Novi 35. They're going to hand it to Tolbert. Give to Tolbert, and looks like he looks to have it with the initial surge over no, the middle. No, they're not going to give it to him. Oh, you're right. He needed to get to the 34. He didn't get there. Although the spot looking a little bit, it looked like they're going to spot at the 35. And now as they unpack bodies, let's see if they get the spot. They will not get it. So Tolbert is stoned by the middle of that defensive line. I thought he had it with the surge. I bet the knee, maybe the knee went down early, Jeff. Yeah, I thought so as well, but that spot was, was stopped. Good well, job short. by the big boys up front for Norda Vista. And now their offense will take the field. A little bit of a different wrinkle. Wonder if we get another look at that last play. Here's the offense for Novi. Tajon Henderson has been the big game hunter. Dreddy Elaine as well. Don't underestimate Eli Martinez. He has been a weapon. And then the junior quarterback, Seth Bolander, has had a very good year for the Braves. First and 10 line is the 35. Here's the toss to Elaine running right up the middle. And Elaine got some open space. He could go to the house. Dreddy Elaine picking him up, putting him down. 65-yard touchdown. Quick strike for Norda Vista. Defense gets a stop. And then Dreddy Elaine takes care of the rest. 
Boy, he is fun to watch when he gets in the open space. He is tough to grab. And once he gets by you, it is over. Eddie, Freddie, and now Dreddy. You know, Ken Batdorf, when we talked this week, said he may be the best of the three brothers. Now, listen, nothing against uh, Eddie Elaine. I saw Freddie Holly play for three Ooh. years. He's a pretty good running back. If Dreddy's better than Freddie, man. Freddie became a grown man his senior year. I mean, he really worked hard in the weight room. And made himself a great player. Eli Martinez swings the leg for the PAT, and it's up and through 7 nothing Novi, just like that. We're going to go triple box right here and see all the games in the upper left-hand corner. Ramona versus Norta Vista. As you can see, the Braves just scored here. Down the bottom right-hand side of your screen, Vista Del Lago, or sorry, top right-hand side of your screen, Vista Del Lago and Polly. Uh, Vista Del Lago is driving down to the zone. There is a timeout right there. And then down at the bottom part of your screen, you actually have Orange Vista driving pretty hard right now on Rancho Verde. We're going to stay in this three box here setup right now because, uh, as you can see, there's a lot of scoring action that was about to happen and occur here. Um, on the right-hand side, we're, we're still looking to try and get an updated score for Vista Del Lago versus Poly. The score bug does not seem to be working at that particular game. Once we have an updated score, we'll give it to you. I, we believe that the score right now is 7-0 Poly, uh, but that is yet to be confirmed. Down at the bottom of your screen, it is 7-0 uh, Rancho Verde versus Orange Vista. And of course, the Braves just scored at the box in the upper left-hand corner of your screen there. All right, so now they're heading back out on the field. Let's go double box side by side this time. Let's have Vista Del Lago and Pauly versus Rancho Verde, or and Rancho Verde versus Orange Vista. So you can see both those games happening up on screen. Not much is happening right now for, for Orange, uh, sorry, for Norta Vista Ramona. We're gonna hop over to the Vista Del Lago Pauly game. Maybe we can get an update from uh, uh, J.R. Reed and Nick Rice. Let's go to it. Vista Del Lago on the doorstep. Two minutes left in the first quarter. They're down by three to the Bears. We've seen Larry Joyce throughout the drive make plays with his feet, both scrambling to throw and scramble to run. We'll see if that, we'll see if he does that here. No, they'll go ground and Concepcion wow. had no chance. Caught and dropped by Keaton Stokely. Number 65. Very well read by the Pauley defense to make the stop. Looks like they'll have to bring in the kicking crew for this one as well. Oster Colindres this season is one for two on field goals. He's rarely even been in this situation. In fact, they're going to snap it way back here. This is a 23 yard attempt. Solomon warmups. This should be a, a a doable kick. Fuller the hold, he had to juggle it a bit, and that yeah. kick is good. Nice. Both kickers convert on their tries, and with 120 left in the quarter, we are tied at three. So really the Ravens only chewed up about five minutes on their drive. There's a timeout currently happening over at Rancho Verde Orange Vista, so we're gonna hop on over to Ramona versus Norta Vista, Gasol Hassan. With Henderson incomplete, second down coming up. Look at the the white unis. I like them. I thought they looked like nurse uniforms early in the year, but now you have the rain cross on the back, and then you have the the ram visage. Is that what you'd say on the on the pant leg right there? As oh, your word. Gonna, we have no visage at half at uh, midfield here. Midfield no, here. No. I like I like that there's a grass field though. I like there's not turf. From the 46-yard line, second and 10 coming up for Ramona. Thanks for joining us here. Football night in Riverside at Zacherup Stadium. Gazal Hassan with you along with Jeff Gorham. Acosta looking to throw to the left side. Incomplete. Intended right there inside the 35-yard line. Oh, wow, that's Royce Mendoza. So Mendoza, or no, sorry, that's Shiner. Incomplete to Shiner. You were talking to Cody Shiner's dad earlier. Yeah, I've talked, but you know what? I, I really like uh, the Shiner family. I was really excited. I got to see the women of Ramona you know, High no, School. That was Royce Mendoza. It, it was, so Mendoza, I, was told, yeah. I was told Royce, I mean, Ken Mishinsky said, yeah, probably because of his hand, not going to play. But, you know, week 10, 
senior year, Gotta give it going a shot. for the playoffs. I'm sure he went to coach and said, Coach, let me go. Third down. Acosta backpedaling. Acosta underneath looking for Tolbert incomplete. Fourth down. Side by up. side, we're going to take you here, Rancho Verde and Orange Vista. The Coyotes are pushing down the field, looking to tie the game up. As Ramona is also looking to tie the game up back at their game. We're going to toss it back on over to TV 16. They have the call. Rancho Verde, Orange Vista. Oh, by or, or, or Orange Vista. <clears throat> Both teams have used a timeout now in the first quarter. Uh, you get five a game? Yes, you do. I believe. No, five and a half. We're going to go three uh, tr three games. Triple box up on your screen. We have Polly, as you can see, driving down into the red zone, just getting inside the 20. Up in your left-hand side of your screen, Ramona with their punt as they switch the ball back over to Norta Vista. And down at the bottom of your screen, you currently have Rancho Verde and Orange Vista with the Coyotes calling a timeout really quick. They're inside the red zone. We're going to stay here and take a look at both uh, or all of these games here right now. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of action currently uh, um, occurring in all these games, but not a lot of scoring necessarily uh, for the for the Vista del Lago Poly game. The score up there is actually 3-3 as Poly runs down the field. Running back gets us inside the five yard line. Uh, that'll be first and goal here in a second, but that game is tied 3-3. Down the bottom part of your screen, you can take a look and see that Orange Vista is about to get their play on first and 10 from about the 18-yard line. And, of course, the upper left-hand corner of your screen, you got Norta Vista and Ramona. Uh, Orange Vista runs the ball up the gut, and it is a touchdown for Orange Vista. They will tie it up at 7-6. Seven, seven, Extra point will make it 7-7. Seven, seven. Uh, we're going to go big screen, though, up on Vista Del Lago and Polly as they are about to enter second down for second and goal. None quite like Jay Sean Thomas, the league leader in rushing this season. And his huge run sets up for, or second and goal when the team switch sides to begin the second. You know, JR, we played a quarter, and if the team switch uniforms, I don't think we'd be able to tell. This has been a great football game. Two teams playing very well early. This is an awfully good matchup so far from what we've seen offensively. And as you mentioned, Nick, I think on paper, it looked like definitely the Ravens had the advantage coming into the game. But the Paulies, the Pauly Bears, I should say, definitely had a nice game plan offensively. And so far, it's been effective. And let's see if they can punch one in here, here in the early part of the second quarter. Now, Pauly... And we're going to bounce on over to Ramona versus Norta Vista as that's the end of the first quarter for Vista Del Lago Poly. The game is tied 3-3. Braves are charging down the field on the Rams. We're going to take a look and see where they go from there. I asked him, asked Ken Bachter, if you think they would be better to come at you with man, he's like, oh, no. He's like, if somebody plays man on us, we, we want them to play man because then we can spread it out a little bit. But um, Bolander has thrown for over 1,000 yards. Can you name the na last Norda Vista quarterback to throw for over 1,000 yards? Uh, Tom St. Jocks, 1972. Tw you're a little bit off. 2013, <laughs> Michael Headland. Oh, that's right. One of the Headland uh, twins. First and 10 from the 39. There's Henderson in motion. Bolander, quick drop, throwing over the middle. Incomplete Eli Martinez, the man intended on the coverage, Michael Perez, and looking to exploit the middle of the field. You know, the middle of the field when games that we've seen has been pretty good. Yeah, but, you know, Ken Badorf. We're going to head back on over to Vista Del Lago against Polly. Start of the second quarter. The score is tied 3-3. As you can see, we got the score bug back up there. We'll get it uh, set up correctly here in one second. But J.R. Reed and Nick Rice on the call. Half. Vista Del Lago had been flagged a few times on offsides penalties. This, another wow. one on the Ravens. Oh, my goodness. That is like their third offside of the night right. here. Now, if you're going to do it, here's the spot, because it only gives the Bears about a half a yard of field position. Second and goal. Here's the quarterback in what is the brotherly shove heard around the world. Did he get in? The officials are talking about it. No call yet. Victor Aguilar, who has one rushing touchdown this season, hoping for another they're talking about it. They're thinking about it. Still no call. No. Wow. Third and goal. Just a yard on the pickup. It looked to me like he got in, but, yeah, man, it, that it, football can't be any closer to it, the goal line. It did on my angle as well. I just thought for sure he was over that 
that goal line. You know, I wouldn't blame them if they go again. It looks like they just might, but a flag is down. Could this be on the Bears? Oh, it's another offside. <laughs> there is somebody <laughs> lining up in that neutral zone that they've not figured out yet. You know, if I'm the Ravens, I'm doing that every play. They got a shred of grass closer to the end zone. Another there push, push. That's Aguilar, touchdown. There we go. Nice drive here by the Bears to finally punch it in and get their first touchdown of the evening early here in the second quarter of play. And that is the play heard all around the world right now, the National Football League, to go along with the CIF Southern section. It's made its way down to Riverside TVs. The extra point is good. And, you know, there's rumors, JR, about that play potentially. All right, we're going to the triple box. Rancho Verde just fumbled the football, giving it to Orange Vista, who scored a touchdown. If that stands, that'll be 13 to 7. Orange Vista, the Coyotes taking on the Mustangs, happening at the bottom part of your screen. Let's actually go full screen on that so we can get the replay from Team Vision, guys. What ended up happening? Now, so whose name are we saying every other breath? Sire Games. Sire Games. <laughs> All together now. Sire Sire games. Games. <laughs> so today is the Sire Games show at this point. Number 37, Jacob Zubia in the kick. I think and uh, going into this matchup, it was going to be Sire versus Durham Riley. So we'll see how the Rancho Brady offense responds on this next drive. And the kick is up. And the kick is, is good. good. Uh, Rancho Verde did attempt a field goal um, uh, after that first, second drive was stalled. There's a replay. He's under pressure. Number 55, Matthew. At that point, the quarterback's got to eat that. Yeah. And off to the races, Sire Gaines. Now, just before this, number 55, uh, they ran a we're going to go back to our triple box as you see that fumble right there. Rancho Verde and Orange Vista. Polly and Vista Del Lago just got done with their kickoff. The, uh, uh, let's see here, Vista Del Lago, I think it's the Ravens. <laughs> are about to come out on the field to attempt their drive right down the field. In the upper left-hand corner, Ramona takes a snap and came back. Did a little drop-off, check, check uh, pass down below. Was able to get uh, forward and move out of bounds. There's still about two minutes and 20 seconds left in that quarter. Um, in the Vista Del Lago Poly game, we are at about the 11-minute mark in the second quarter, not the first. And down at the bottom part of your screen, as the kickoff is being returned by Rancho Verde, we are still finishing out the first quarter there and have a little bit more than three minutes to go for now because uh, we, we have so many people that are, that are uh, uh, moving down the field. Uh, we're going to pop on over to the Ramona Norte Vista game and have Gasol uh, tell us what's happening over there. Go for it, Gasol. You know, high football IQ, he was the scout team running back last year. So he learned a lot doing the scout team, and he'll take it again, and he loses his footing. He dives forward inside the 45. They'll mark him to the 44, a three-yard pickup, and brings up third and six. Yeah, the grass monster got him. It's going to be a shame. So they're going to they're going to make this field turf next year. I like having a grass field in Riverside. I don't know about you, Jeff. I love it. I just wish they they would put in the resources to uh, keep it nice all year long. I know everybody in in the world uses the stadium, but third and six, Acosta rolling. Here comes pressure. He's going to peg it down the field. Jump ball, intercepted. Intercepted at about the 10 yard line. And we're popping back over to the Rancho Verde Orange Vista game as the Mustangs get a long touchdown to make the score 13 14. We'll take a look at that replay here in just one second uh, as the Braves got that interception off the Rams. Uh, interesting stuff happening in these three games that we're taking a look at. So if you look now in the upper left hand corner of your screen, you should see the Ramona pass play currently happening. Uh, we're going to go back live down uh, to Teen Vision. Uh, slipping. Oh, what a catch. Absolute. What an absolute great catch right there uh, from, from the Braves uh, for that for that particular interception. But we're going to go back down to Rancho Verde Orange Vista so we can take a look at that replay really quick. Andy, let's go full screen on that and listen in to find out what happened. And it's good. So we have a 14-14 matchup and it's here we go. Here it is. 
Straight handoff, he bop, he gets hit, pops it outside, and he's off to the races. Yeah, there's just no catching him once he gets out in the open. Yeah, and they're just not fitting up the run quite quite well enough right there. I think right there, number 29. Uh, so that's a quick update for the Rancho Verde Orange Vista game. As you can see, Vista Del Lago and Polly is about to enter time out. It looks like it was the Ravens that took it. Uh, in the upper left-hand corner of your screen, you can see that the uh, Braves and the Rams are about to end the first quarter here. So right now we're going to stay wide, stay in this triple box set so you guys can kind of see all the stuff that we're taking a look at and keep an eye on you. Tonight, uh, keeping an eye on, the, on for you. Tonight at 11 o'clock, right here on uh, YouTube.com slash City of Riverside, we are going to have the Friday Night Pep Rally where Pep Fernandez and Jeff Gorham will be in studio to give you all the reactions and highlights from the games tonight. Tons of senior uh, night matchups happening for league championships all around the Inland Empire. Uh, we may even have a guest host in here tonight. Uh, we were putting together the scoreboards uh, earlier, and uh, that would be my, my tech director, Andy Lopez, and myself. And we were taking a look at it. We got a lot of scores, a lot of scores, a lot of scoreboards, a lot of highlights to go over here for, uh, for you guys. Uh, but for now, we're going to uh, hop back on over to the uh, Vista Del Lago Poly game where the Ravens look to be driving down the field. My goodness. 56 <laughs> yards for Fabian Bolanos. Ravens. Touchdown Ravens. Oh my Fabian goodness. Bolanos. Just when they needed a yard, they got 56 and a touchdown. <laughs> so was going for it a good idea? I think so. See? Proves me right. <laughs> You can't let these opportunities slip by you. And there is nobody on Riverside TV more insufferable than a borrow up a fourth down <laughs> conversion. Fabian Bolanos all the way for the score. That is such a great call. I got to <laughs> hand it to Coach Tui on that one for making the call. You know, they figure a team that's so good running the ball this Next season. Timing always helps right there as the Ravens tie it up with the Bears at 10 in your upper right-hand corner. Upper left-hand corner, a timeout was just taken by the Braves and the Rams as they try and come down the field here. Down at the bottom portion of your screen, Rancho Verde and Orange Vista playing a very, very tight game. Thanks to our friends over at Teen Vision for allowing us to jump in and out for their particular game. Uh, right now, we're just staying wide, kind of seeing what happens in all three of these games as they're all coming out of stoppage time, trying to make, uh, make sense of it. Down at the bottom of your screen, we have uh, the Coyotes driving down the field. Pass is incomplete, uh, so that's not going to go very far. In the upper left-hand corner of your screen, you can see Norta Vista ready to start the second quarter, uh, driving down on the Rams. As a matter of fact, we're going to pop on over there and listen to Gasol. Uh, tell us what's going on. Movement by Ramona. That's going to be on Ramona. Five yards, so it'll make it third and manageable. They'll move up to the 18-yard line. And Bolander looks like he caught one of the Rams who jumped early. Another look at it. See, if you're going to do that, just lay on the guys. Make everybody fall down. <laughs> Third and three. <laughs> You're going to go off sides, at least earn it. It's only five yards. Handoff right up the middle. This is Costello. The fullback will have the first down up to the 23-yard line. Six-yard pickup on the play. Isaac Costello playing a nice role. And he's had a pretty good year. I mean, as a fullback, he's averaging nearly six yards a carry. So first down to the 24-yard line will move the sticks. And how big is that penalty? I mean, you... you, you you're, you're holding him back. You almost had him stopped, and then you hand Norda Vista five yards. That's a tough thing to do. You cannot give Ken Batdorf any movement. Well, And that's what Ken Mashinsky and I talked about. He said, you know, we, we really got to eliminate mistakes. He thinks probably there are two or three games they left on the table because of mistakes. Hey, you know, that's just because you have 18 new starters uh, playing varsity football. First and 10 from the 24. Bollinger to throw. Bolander's got time. Looking up top, he's got Martinez overthrown, incomplete. On the coverage for Ramona, Iniola Olawuyi also helping out. Michael Perez was over top out of his safety position and second and ten coming up. And we've seen, you know, the Mashinsky teams of the past here at Ramona. Very fundamentally sound. Probably the best tackling teams we've seen. Yeah, we always, yeah, we always talk about that. I mean, they really are fundamental on the defensive side. I just haven't seen. I mean, there is consistency and balance with this Ramona uh, 
football program. I mean, their freshman team went 5-0 and this year. They played in the, the city championship yesterday. Norda Vista and Ramona both going 4-0 and going into uh, the final game. And Ramona has a great running back as a freshman. Don't know his name, but he's number one. Timeout, Norda Vista. Ken Batdorf wants to talk it over here. Second and 10 from the 24. Gonzalez. Going back, triple boxes. Nordavista takes their time out there. About 11 minutes to go in the second quarter over there. Uh, if you take a look on the right side of your screen, Polly and Vista Del Lago, there's about nine minutes left. Uh, we can see the Ravens are, uh, are about ready to receive the ball from Polly. Polly uh, gets the punt off. Our camera eventually will follow it over there and we'll be good to go and give you an update on that particular situation. Now, the bottom part of your screen, Rancho Verde and Orange Vista are tied at 14. This has been a back and forth battle. Uh, between these these two uh, titans out there um, in in the Valverde area, uh, actually let's go let's go uh, full screen or uh, Rancho Verde and Orange Vista. Number thirty one, Adam Gomez, with a great jump, great timing, leap, brings up second and fifteen. And earlier we were talking, uh, saying again as a reminder, ranchers can have to pass the ball. Sooner or later, they're going to have to get a pass off. Well, when you have number zero back there, I'm not so sure. <laughs> um, now, uh, that you know, if you think about it, he batted that down. He could have just caught it. Caught it and it, walked into the end zone. Yeah, no, that was, that was, was no uh, one around. That was a heads-up play right there. And these guys have been watching film all week. Um, these opponents know each other very well. So, um, and, and, and the playbooks, I haven't looked at the playbook, but, um, you know, I – I can't say that there's much deviation in this game to what they've done in, in, in games past. So um, obviously there's going to be a couple more wrinkles here and there than uh, that each team has put in for the – Much like on my face, a couple more wrinkles. Yeah, I don't know if we can do anything about those. We we'll have try, a timeout in the field? We'll try to keep those wrinkles off the film. Uh, Inland Cryo can probably help with that to yeah, a certain yeah. extent. Check out iecryo.com for uh, increased collagen production in the skin. Um, I don't really need protection except I get hit with a golf club. Uh, by one of my golfers this year. Um, girls golf at Citrus Hill. We got a lot of standing season. actually happening in all the games right now. Uh, there was literally a stoppage of play in all the games right now. However, the Ravens are uh, back playing with a short drop down pass over there on the right hand side. Uh, there's a timeout called down at the Rancho Verde Orange Vista game as well. So we're a little bit behind right there. Uh, but for now, what I think we're going to do is we're going to stay triple box try and see what's happening here. Like I said, there's a lot of standing around, a lot of standing around, a lot of uh, substitutions, getting players on and off the field. Again, senior night at most of these places, uh, making sure that their, uh, their seniors are, are sent off with a very fond farewell. Tight matchup actually in every single game uh, right now. Uh, Novi uh, being up only by seven on the Rams as they try to do a little run play, didn't get very far uh, right there. Batdorf against Mashinsky, it's a great matchup. Vista Del Lago and Polly also tied uh, right now at 10 as uh, the Ravens kick back to the Bears and there'll be a change over there. The Bears will start about their own 40-yard line, uh, bringing it down the field. And then Rancho Verde, Orange Vista, again, it's, it's been a pretty good defensive uh, matchup actually all around for, for these guys. Um, the running game in all three of these games really hasn't gotten anywhere. Uh, the entire night. So it's been very, very good to watch these defensive matchups um, and seeing what these guys are, are, are doing um, as, as the game goes on throughout the night. Uh, we're going to pop back on over right now to the Norda Vista Ramona game where Gasol Hassan has the call. We're going to pick it back up. Guys in motion. He resets. Here's the toss to a lane running left. Trying to turn the corner. Oh. And he'll be tackled at about the 40-yard line, making the tackle Michael Perez. But a nice job on the outside slowing him down was Barrios. Yeah, if you let Dreddy get on the outside, it is over. But watch That's a great, great pitch by Bolander, by the way. Watch here. Barrios slows him down enough. And then here comes Perez to fill. He did get over the 40. Just over the 40-yard line. So about four yards there for a lane, which is a lot better than 65, second down. Are you a fan of the, the New Jerseys of Norda Vista? I'm a fan of New Jersey. I was born there, but uh, <laughs> nah, they're fine. It, it's They're hard to see. The black-on-black -black numbers are hard to see, but, you know, we make it through. They do have the numbers on the helmets, which help. Here's the toss. And up to the 45-yard line, close to another first down. 
That's Tejon Henderson. I think they're going to give it to him. Let's see. Oh, it's going to be really close here. We might see the chain gang. You know, not the same for me with the chain. You know why. Chain gang is hard for me to talk about. Instead, they'll just give it a first down. Because there's no Yancey Dodson. You're going to make me cry. Stop. (laughs) (laughs) But it's true. It is true. Most chain gangs are criminals. Not our guy. No. Well, I mean. Well, we do have Kelvin Butler still over there doing some chain gang stuff. But no, Yancey Dodson. It's like the police without sting. <laughs> First and ten from the 46. Although I'm a big Stuart Copeland guy, to be honest. Uh, the police without sting are just uh, security guards. Elaine breaks one tackle but can't break the second. Stepping up and making the tackle, Peter Mesa. And we're going to go side by side. And, of course, so right will when we do, up to the 48-yard line, two more yards uh, there for Freddie Elaine. Now, Paul, all of a sudden, fundamentally, a, uh, you know, sometimes when you get in trouble, field, Jeff, so you go back to the basics. And I think that's Raven what happened territory. to the defense for Ramona. So they got instead, on the big run. So instead, we're going right back to the Ramona Nord Vista game. Go for it, Gasol. Lane to kind of run to the outside lane where Mesa was there waiting for him. And Elaine not. Arlington leading Hillcrest 14 to 3. How about that, Kevin Argamosa? Argamosa in his bag of tricks. Now, I was going to say, Elaine there was a little frustrated at the end of that play, and that's one thing if you are Ken Mashinsky, you're happy to see. Little movement. Offensive line for Novi, that double wing. Toss. Henderson spins 360, slips up into the second level. He'll get all the way to the 41 yard line. He'll have the first down. Looks like he might have lost the ball there for a second at the end of the play. So Barrios gets spun around and then slips back inside, slips Mesa's tackle, and finally Royce Mendoza brings him down. Now, I thought that would be an interesting matchup on the outside if they were going to throw. Because Mendoza would draw the coverage on Henderson. And a player down for Ramona as we'll take a break here with 5.41 to play. So 10-10, Polly and Vista Del Lago. 14-3, Arlington over Hillcrest. And then 14-14, Rancho Verde in Orange Vista. That's a good one. Some wild, wacky stuff. Can we look at the, the, the TriCast? I would love to see. Ken Mashinsky out helping his injured player. Look at Ken Mashinsky. You know, I was going to say, I saw the women today. I saw Alicia Berber, the head basketball coach at uh, RCC. I saw Laura Shiner, and I saw Jennifer Mashinsky. And I, I, I had to go over and say all, hello to all three of them, my three favorite ladies in the River Valley League. I really like uh, Jennifer Mashinsky because she's a cutie, and I love to mess with uh, Ken. And uh, she used to work. She used to work at Riverside yeah, TV. She worked at Riverside. We're going to go side by side right now as there's an injury on that particular uh, game. We have Vista Del Lago and Polly. Polly charging down the field. The pass out to the outside. He gets him out of bounds at about the 38 yard line. There's about a little bit less than five minutes to go in the second quarter there. There's a little bit more than five minutes to go um, at the game over at Ramona. And we are just starting the second quarter right now. And just a second here at Rancho Verde Orange Vista. Um, for that game as well. You can kind of see as everyone's coming back out of the field. Uh, right now, we're going to go up to the Poly Vista Del Lago game and listen to Nick Rice and J.R. Reed on the call. Out of the Sun Belt League with Vista Del Lago. They need... First well, down of the game play. is seven. On the play, let's see what the deal is here. It came, this flag came real late. Super late. This would be the Bears' first flag of the night. It is in the area of holding. Boy, uh, what's amazing is how late that came in. But it wipes out a sensational effort from Thomas. Ravens flagged five times tonight. First penalty, meanwhile, on Pauly. Third and 12. This is child's play compared to the third and 24 they nearly converted yeah. just a couple <laughs> plays ago. <laughs> yeah, it's like, hey, we can do this. 
Well, sticks still say second down. It should be third down. Wow. This one's juggled, hit as he throws. That is caught on the outside. This is number 21, Matthew Padilla, and he converts on third and long. Wow, just like that, another first down pickup here for the Bears. You know, it almost seems Victor Aguilar, the quarterback, plays better in these third down and long situations. Yeah, when you put pressure on him, he just seems to respond. Another methodical drive for the Bears. Off the play fake, Aguilar keeps it and gains five on the read option. Once again, a nice mix of passing and rushing here on this series of downs by the Bears. A capable runner, Victor Aguilar, and he has first down yardage. It's amazing to think they lost 18 on a sack fumble earlier in this outstanding drive. A couple of third downs that they've converted, one totally, one nearly. Torrance levels Matthew Padilla on the completion. And I got to think that Jerron Gilbert and the coaching staff First saw something in the Ravens' defense because they're Back passing here. the ball. Here we'll hold for Eli Martinez. Martinez, one of the seniors honored before the game in the senior night ceremony. A big night for Ken Batdorf. You know, a big game, obviously, against Ramona, and he respects Ken Bichinski a lot. They were chatting before the game. And then he's also got to honor his senior class, Jeff. Yeah, but as a coach, that's the one night of the year you don't want to have to even deal with. It's a, It's... <laughs> Because, you, you know, hey, we know Ken Batdorf. All he wants to think about is football. He doesn't want to think about filling the snack bar or any of those things. He just wants to coach his game. Snap back, hold down, kick is up, and it's good. 14 to nothing in favor of Norda Vista. And we'll get another look at it. Right up the middle. They went right up the middle on the play here. Nice job. The two guys in front clearing space ryan where all right we got both these games side by side ramona uh, versus norda vista and vista del lago against Polly. both teams actually scored simultaneously Polly got a touchdown so they're going to kick their field goal right now and if they end up making it that should put them up 17 to 10 at th and survey says ding 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 Polly is now up 17 to 10 on Vista Del Lago with about three minutes left in the second quarter. On the left-hand side of your screen, Norda Vista scored their touchdown against Ramona. The score there is now 14 to nothing with a little bit more than five uh, minutes left in the second quarter there. Um, and then uh, in our other game that we're keeping an eye on, not much movement has happened. It's a fourth down and 10 tied 14-14 uh, right now. Andy, can we go to a triple box? We can go to a triple box. We will go to a triple box, and we're going to show you a bunch of people. And what they're doing? They're doing our favorite thing to do on a Friday night, which is stand around as we have three games that we're uh, watching right now. A lot of standing, a lot of standing around. Uh, we're going to go full screen on the Rancho Verde Orange Vista game as the Coyotes are about to uh, punt down the field. It's a play. Yeah. It's placed well. Like I said, the field is flipped. No return on the play. Looks like things are getting a little chippy out there, as they should be. This is for first place. Uh, the punt did not go very far. We're going to still be in the triple box. The Rams fielding the kickoff, getting great field position out of bounds at their own 48-yard line, where they got a chance to go make their first score of the evening. Um, lots of standing around again going on in all three of these games. It is senior night for everyone out there. Uh, coming up at halftime, when we go to halftime for each of these games, we're going to try and stay on one of the other games that is not actually at halftime. Uh, so there might not be a whole lot of bouncing around back and forth. However, if all three games go to halftime, we'll bring it back here in the studio. Um, and I'll give you a quick little recap on scores uh, from so far from tonight. Uh, as you can see down at the bottom of your screen right there, Rancho Verde charging up the field with a great run by number zero. Um, hopefully putting them in a position to start scoring here soon. Upper left-hand corner of your screen, the Rams going nowhere as the Braves make a nice little tackle to take them down. Uh, they're going to give them forward progress of about a yard up in that particular space. In the upper right-hand corner of your screen, you can see the Ravens are about to start their march down the field against the Bears. Um, and we'll, again, stay right here, triple box for right now, as we try and figure out what is happening with each of these teams. <clears throat> Senior night again, league titles on the line. Tonight, Pep Fernandez is going to have all the scores and highlights of what happened last night, Thursday night, 
There's a flag on the play and the Ramona Norda Vista game that most certainly will be for pass interference. Uh, down at the bottom part of your screen, Rancho Verde throwing down the field with a great catch. And we're going to go to that game and take it full screen. Thanks to our friends over at Team Vision. Him the ball. And that was on Calvin Moore. Calvin Moore is a heck of a, a, heck of a defensive back. I believe he's committed to uh, Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. So uh, this is, this is going to be a good game for these Rancho Verde uh, receivers to maybe put some, some good stuff on tape for their recruiting profile. Great that was catch. an incredible catch. And Amarion Orange has 27 catches on the season with 10 touchdowns. And uh, before the game we were talking again, just as a reminder, we had to get him the ball. They get him the ball, good things are going to happen. And he returned that opening kick, making me a profit. Dylan Riley read that one. Oh, great hit. And, and a, flag. a flag on the field. Looks like that might be holding against the Mustangs. It is. 36 yards touchdown run. run. run Jeremy time. Acosta handling business himself. Ramona Jeff Boy, on the board. He is dangerous. Like I said, you get him outside the pocket. If he has nothing, he's going to make something out of nothing. And that's what he did. He made a fine move right there. Great move. Like shades of Michael Vick or Randall Cunningham or Ooh, Steve Young. That. Yeah. And it's big just because of how well Norda Vista's defense has been playing now for Acosta to go make that play. Your senior QB makes the play. New kicker for Ramona is Jose Martinez, and he's been taking over the duties for the last two weeks. That one is up and through. He is a lineman, and he is a soccer goalie. So here's the fake. They buy it on the fake, and then he's got all this space running down the field. Look at Aaron Diaz, the big fell, and the downfield block here by one of the wide receivers. That's... Brendan Ruiz and the touchdown by Acosta displays the ball for all to see. Best helmet still in the area. The Bears with two quick uh, receptions as they're moving right down the field, uh, charging right back into the red zone, or at least very close to it. And they're at the 25-yard line right there. Ramona getting their first score of the night. That's going to be good for Mashinsky's crew as they head closer to halftime. Um, in the Rancho Verde game, it's still tied at 14. Uh, the Mustangs are currently charging down the field, not going very far. But we're going to go full screen right now on the Poly Vista Del Lago game. Take a look and see what the Bears can do here with 25 yards to go. In the first half, loss of five. Aguilar guns it to the left and finds Padillo once again. Shoved out of bounds at about the 21-yard line, a gain of nine. A breakout performance tonight from Aguilar, the junior quarterback for the Bears. Third and six yards to go with a little over a minute left in the half. One timeout in the back pocket for Jerome Gilbert, the head coach. Back shoulder once again. Oh, and my Allen goodness. And Allen appeared to have been uh, with plenty of contact, interfered a little bit by Sims, but no flag has been thrown. I think that was good by the refs. Just kind of let them have at it. Stops the clock at 102. We had raved of the excellence of Samoski and his kicking ability. And they're going to test his leg here with 102 left in the half. Wow, just shy of a 40-yard kick here, which he's fully capable of doing this. Absolutely. The southpaw from 38. Here we go to extend the lead to two scores. On the left half, Samoski, plenty of distance. It's up, and it is no oh, good. Oh, he just missed it. Wow. He could have made With that miss, Polly will still stay up by seven on Vista Del Lago with about a minute to go in that half. The Braves decide to throw down the field, get a little bit of yardage right there against the Rams as they cut over the middle. And, of course, the Mustangs right now are charging into Coyote territory. We're going to stay uh, here uh, for a second. Actually, well, we're going to go full screen on the Rancho Verde Orange Vista game. Let's see what Team Vision has for us. <laughs> they threw for so the we're not going to ask Camacho again, ever again, uh, what they're going to do on that play. <laughs> well, that cancels out. Uh, Tim, you had that great prophecy to start. So yeah. we're back at neutral. That's okay. 
The Ravens uh, just attempted to pass over the middle of the field. That was incomplete. The Braves now are charging up the gut, hoping to get somewhere. The Rams just know that's coming down the entire day and have been able to shut it down so far uh, pretty good throughout throughout today. There's a timeout down at the Rancho Verde Orange Vista game. That's the reason why we came back here to our triple box. Uh, we're going to keep staying right here, seeing what everyone is going to do. Uh, the upper right-hand corner, you can see the, the uh, Ravens trying to run the ball up the middle. And no go. The Bears defense stopped that there. That first half is about to expire. In the upper left-hand corner of your screen, we still got a little bit more than two minutes left as the Braves are looking to push their way downfield. Hopefully, hoping to get something off this play. We'll see if it's a run up the middle, as they are prone to do. It is not. It's a, a check down throw. Braves get five, seven yards on the play. That'll take them down to about their own 48. But for now, we're going to go back full screen at Rancho Verde versus Orange Vista with the Mustangs looking to capitalize and change the score to 20 to 14. For the first half, West Valley about to clinch a playoff spot. Oh my gosh, Dylan Riley overwhelmed. Taking three, four guys to tackle him. By a pack of coyotes. It might be time to throw a little play action, a little wheel route other side. Something quick to the other side. Uh, so take the action with him. Come back the other way to Orange. And uh, maybe a quick slant to Orange. We're going to say double touch. box right here really quick as Vista Del Lago is marching down the field. Gets a big throw. This, this ends the second half. Gets in close to the end of the first half. Are we going to call a timeout? Will Coach call timeout? They did. They called timeout with about five seconds left on the screen. Uh, we're going to go back down, take a look at Rancho Verde Orange Vista. Let's see if they can score on this play. Just pitch it to him. There's yeah, nowhere for him to down. go. So I was right and wrong at the same time with that prediction. A whole it's not a bad pack ball. of coyotes. A whole plethora of coyotes. I think you had it right with the pack. Yeah. There was a running start there for number, the first guy, 31. We're saying his name again. 31, yeah, Adam play. Gomez made the initial hit and then came back in again, made a hit. Yeah, and it looks like this Orange Vista defense is really selling out for that run. So this might be a good time for a play action. I mean, right here, I, I wouldn't. Now it's too late. I wouldn't uh, be surprised if the Orange Vista defense just backed up onto the goal line and expected a pass, um, especially with this Orange Vista defensive line. They're going to apply a lot of pressure to the quarterback. So right we have here. a twin receiver split left. Is that a shotgun or a, 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 a what, what, wait, going over the top? He's got him. He hold on. Touchdown, Amarion <laughs> Orange. Let's go. No time it is, gentlemen. Instruments up. And touchdown. a touchdown. Here you can hear the instruments right now. I got to give a lot of credit to Amarion. His performance against San Jacinto. We're back live with the triple box right here. We thought Polly and Vista Del Lago were going to do the play, but it looks like Vista Del Lago called a quick timeout yet again as they saw what was going on there. The Mustangs get another touchdown and are now up 20 to 14 on the Orange Vista Coyotes. Uh, that defense of the Coyotes was doing extremely well to try and keep Rancho Verde out of the end zone, but eventually they ended up pushing through. Uh, the upper left-hand corner of your screen is about to end the first half. Uh, uh, Norta Vista and Ramona are currently in a timeout situation. Both teams are huddled over there as they try and figure out what the Braves are going to do. Uh, they had about 35 yards to go to make it to the end zone. Um, the extra point, it looks like, is good uh, for the Mustangs. Here was the touchdown, by the way. Pass uh, back shoulder in the end zone uh, to make that work. But for now, we're going to go full screen over at Poly Vista Del Lago. Let's see it. Jump ball from Joyce into single coverage, and oh. it's ripped away. Wow. And that's how the half ends. There's still essentially a tenth of a second. Oh, is there? No, it finally went to zero. Lay John Johnson, number eight, with a huge defensive play in the end zone. Oh, my goodness. What a play from the savvy veteran, Lejon Johnson. Wow, that, that could have been there, but that will expire the clock, and we head into halftime. Rancho Verde got their touchdown to work. Uh, unfortunately, Vista Del Lago did not. Both pulled basically the same play, threw it to the back of the end zone. So, Polly is going to go into halftime, being up 17-10 on the Ravens. 
um, out there at Martin Luther King High School. Um, up in the upper left hand corner of your screen, you can see the Braves are still marching down against the Rams. Well, there's going to be a kickoff that goes uh, down here from Rancho Verde to Orange Vista. They did miss the extra point. Uh, so that might prove very costly a little bit later on in this game. Uh, but we'll see what, how that works. We're going to try and do a double box with Ramona and Rancho here really quick as we're trying to see what happens here to end this particular half. Norta Vista with the throw up, out of bounds, incomplete, not going to work. That will bring up third and ten uh, for them. Uh, well, Rancho Verde and Orange Crest. Orange Crest is going to try and move their move their way down the field. Um, you can see a, player, a couple of players upset right there with uh, but possibly uh, unintentional, not needed uh, uh, personal foul. Um, we're going to see where, where this goes and what ends up coming up out of this. We'll, we'll wait to hear from the rest for that. Um, we're just taking a look right now at also at the Ramona game. You can see that uh, uh, the pass was great down the field, uh, just unfortunately out of bounds there at the time. Uh, as we're getting closing in here on the the uh, end of the first half. Let's actually go full screen, Ramona Norta Vista, and uh, listen to Gasol tell us what's the haps. Sola is the tailback. Here comes Iosefa in motion. The toss to Sola up the middle. Sola crashing in close to a first down. Stop at the 25-yard line. So nine more yards there for Fave Sola. And it'll be fourth down and one. So Novi's going to call timeout here. Or they won't. Clock's still running. No, I think they're going to. I think you need to call timeout here because they're not going to call for the measurement. You can't let the clock run out here. I think he is. Well, he did it with three seconds. So maybe they're going to just kick a field goal. There you go. So three seconds to play, and you come out and kick the field goal. It'll be a 41-yard attempt for Eli Martinez. He's not going to attempt this. There's no way. What do you want to? What do you want to bet? A burrito? Yeah. Let's bet a burrito. I don't. I don't really do burritos. So let's bet a uh, plate of nachos. Plate of nachos. <laughs> By the way, you know, Gazal spends the night at, at uh, the Stately Gorham Manor on Friday nights when we have I a game tomorrow. Back looking for contact. Yeah, he's the heartbeat of this team for sure, and making plays like that is definitely going to exemplify that. Wow, what was that? He threw down AJ Boone like AJ Boone wasn't even there, and AJ Boone's a good good defender. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever seen Sayer up front, but he's a running back, really built like a linebacker. Um, I think he's being recruited as a linebacker at the next level, so he's physical, and he likes the contact, like you said, Tim. Running hard, first and ten. Oh, Balls up, balls ball out. on the deck. Picked up by Jesse Anderson, who's got a seam. Jesse Anderson could go all the way. He's heading up field. Plenty he's a sprinter, run. and here we go. Touchdown. Guess what time it is, boys? Instruments up. And here Vista we go. is about to kick a That's very good. long field goal here against the Rams. It is up, and it is good. Norta Vista, as the first half expires, are up 17-7 to now on the Rams. Well, Orange Vista came back down the field and tied up their game with the Rancho Verde Mustangs. What an interesting setup we have for these games here on the Friday Night Pep Zone. Uh, we're going to keep an eye on each of these games, but for now, because that's the end of the first half for Ramona Norta Vista, we're going to go over to the Rancho Verde Orange Vista game and take a look and see what that game is going to have uh, transpired for it here for the last uh, four minutes and 23 seconds as the Coyotes are now up by one on the Mustangs. Our other games that we're currently taking a look at, Poly High School is up 17 to 10 on Norta Vista, or not Norta Vista, excuse me, Vista Del Lago. Lots of Vistas tonight. As a matter of fact, I believe there's a Vista in each one of these games that we are actually keeping an eye on here for you. Uh, but they're up 17-10 right now. The Bears are on the Ravens. Uh, that game is at halftime. The Braves are up 17-7 uh, to on the Rams. That game also just went into halftime. But for now, we're going to go back big full screen, thanks to our friends over at Team Vision, um, and bring to you the Orange Vista Rancho Verde game, uh, unbroken for the next few minutes. Uh, let's take a listen in and see what's going on in that big matchup. It's very fortuitous bounce. Fortuitous is a great word. That is a great word. I like that. I use quintessential. Yeah, that's okay. 
I, had a, I went to high school with a guy named Quint Essential. <laughs> <laughs> First down. Actually, this is a kickoff. <laughs> <laughs> Zuby on the kick. Corralled there by number... Who is that? Ooh, great blocking. Wow. He's got some wiggle, man. He's got some wiggle. Everybody, down about everybody's putting their best, foot, their best foot forward tonight, and I'm very impressed with That with was this. number six. Number six? That was a Marion Orange. Marion Orange running hard. He was giving it to a, a defenders right there. So we're at 21-20. Four minutes to go. 4-16 exactly in the second quarter. It looks like there might be another penalty on Anthony Hines. Where? I didn't see the flag. I think they, actually maybe not. Looks like the officials are conferring with the coaches. Well, here comes Rancho. Ready to line up. Led by quarterback Tyreel Burpee, who's in the shotgun formation, or is that the pistol? Pistol. In the pistol formation. Dylan Riley behind him. Dylan Riley in the handoff. Dylan Riley breaks right, cuts back left into a mass of humanity. Still going, still running, legs churning, making butter. Here we go. Yeah, he's scary when he gets the ball. Loss of about two yards on the play. A tough two yards, too. Yeah. He, he, his, I want to see what his yard after contact would be. No, we don't keep that stat, unfortunately. That's Jimmy's job, and Camacho forgot to <laughs> write that down. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's why they called that emergency meeting on Monday. First down. <laughs> Chris Baxter, if you're watching this, you need somebody <laughs> to take over stat duty. Yards after catch, specifically. <laughs> we need an expert statistician. Now, we talked earlier about the lack of a crowd on the rancher side. Now take a look at it. Burpee back to pass. That one hung for a long time. Caught by number 18. Keith Felder, first time we've called his name. Looked like it was kind of a bubble screen setup. It was, it was a, a kind of an awkward setup. Like there was a pick play there with the first receiver coming through. And that, that ball hung for a long time. It's the replay. Yep. See, there was Orion, uh, Marion Orange on the slant, and then following is number 18 Felder. And a little I, dig route there or something. Yeah, but hey, they completed it. It worked for a yeah. couple yards. And I know we talked about this on the broadcast last week. Um, Burpee has been a lot more accurate on his shorter throws mm -hmm. and just, just throwing in general. Um, I think they knew going into this game that they were going to have to have some success in the passing game. And I, I don't know if you could be any more satisfied with the, um, with the passing su success that they've had thus far. Looks like OB hard may count. have jumped. Yep, hard count there. Good call by Burpee. Good job. And that's a, just a staple in the Eric Zomo offense. I used a hard count when I was a quarterback when my breath would freeze. Because it was cold in Michigan. <laughs> Third down. <laughs> Last game of my high school career, we played in a snowstorm. They got snowstorms in Michoacan? In Michigan. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I remember getting tackled and the ground was hard, like frozen hard. Oof. I can't even imagine that. I left a lot of skin on that field. Third and four. Something happened there. Yeah. Flags flying everywhere. It's like false start on Rancho. Oh, uh, they're giving it back. Yeah, it looks like this is Dylan Riley versus the world right now. He's getting a lot of a lot of a lot of usage tonight. In the back, you're the back judge you see there, it just got hidden there, is Joe Rogers. He was an assistant coach at RCC when I was there with men's basketball. Our old friend Joe on this uh, referee crew, led by Charlie Chastain right there. We're looking at him. The years have been kind to Charlie. There's a few wrinkles there, just like in our offense. <laughs> I.E. Cryo can help with that. Can it? Yes, we can. It freezes wrinkles off? It uh, increases the collagen production in the skin. Huh. I went to college. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Tyrell Burpee back to pass. Going over the top. He's got Amari Orange. He's got him. Oh, that's that's Jerry's Midget. Midget. Number two. Touchdown. Oh, wow. You know what time it is, boys? Instruments up. Big play. Let's go. Let's go. We are seeing it all tonight. Justin, what are your thoughts on this Orange Vista secondary? I mean, 
it, it's tough. I feel like the defense has played well the majority of the game, but they've given up a few big plays, and Rancho Verde's been able to capitalize on every one of them. Coverage wasn't that... I, I'm excited to see the replay. I, I thought the coverage was pretty good on that. Uh, Midget just happened to come down with a great catch and kept running. Jerry's Midget coming up big right there. Yeah. Yeah, these receivers are doing a good job of uh, beating these safeties and corners um, and getting behind the getting behind the coverage. Uh, if you're the Orange Vista defense, you got to keep everything in front of you right now because they're making a lot of big plays. Javier Zuniga in for the kick. Let's see if the snap is good. Lace is out. Yanked it again. Oh, he made it. But that one cur curled in on the uh, goalpost there. Um, that's like bending it like Beckham. Let's see. Check this Let's replay. See. There he goes, over the top. Wow. Yeah, nice throw like by Burpee. Yeah, Donovan really. Morton there. Yeah. Really dropped that ball right in there. there. You know, the ball, the way he's throwing it today, it's really turning over. You know, like uh, in the past, I've seen him throw where it sailed. He's coming over the top with it that makes the end of it turn and really drop it in there nicely. As a former quarterback's coach, that's what I tried to get my guys to do. Yeah, and, and these defensive backs have not seen a ton of quarterbacks that are going to throw the ball down the field all year. Um, I know Vista Murrieta ha uh, hit him for a couple deep passes, but uh, I, I truly don't know if they game plan for that. That's not something that they've done uh, in terms of this Rancho Verde offense. That's not something that they've shown a ton of success on. So uh, credit to the Rancho Verde offensive coordinator for uh, switching up the game plan and, and throwing the ball deep this week. Jesse Anderson, dangerous kick returner. Looking for a seam. Brought down by number eight. Or is that six? Couldn't tell. If it was six, it's a Mario. No, it can't be. Yeah, Mario Orange on the kick return. On the kick defense. Yeah, and he's been all over the field tonight. Hey, he was involved quite a bit last week, and they're keeping him involved today and having a really, really solid game. Tim, what are you thinking for a quarterback, uh, Khalil Abdulaziz, right now? I think you go back to um, uh, what got you here. Let's go to um, Sire Gaines. One way or the other, get the ball in Sire Gaines' hands, good things are going to happen. And you'd like to pick up some points on this drive because you also get the ball at the start of the second half. So put up a couple points, get the ball back, and really turn this game around quickly. Looks like the Rancho Verde offense is showing quarters. Wow, what a great play. You know, I'm gonna have to disagree with you right there, Tim. Uh, I feel like right now you gotta take what the defense gives you, right? The defensive backs are backing up. Throw the ball underneath. You've got a lot of playmakers who can get yards after the catch. You got 59 seconds. Try to get in the field goal range. Try to make a play. Uh, Jacob Zubia has been pretty accurate on his PATs all yep. night. I think right now you got to take what the See, defense who made gives this play? you. Who was that? Number seven, Elijah Malone. Could have caught that. Long, rangy defensive lineman. Second and ten. Yeah, momentum has been really been really been shifting in this game. Another game running line. hard, knocking people over. Good hit. Good hit there by number one, AJ Boone. We've said AJ's name a few times. AJ Boone's being recruited as defensive back. At Rancho Verde. Picks up a couple and, yards. And I'm play. not much of an offense coordinator, but based on how well this offensive line has been blocking in pass pro, I think you've got some time to throw maybe some some uh, some crossing routes down the middle um, into this cover four defense. And then, um, you know, find your big playmakers down the field. But there's enough time for this quarterback to make that read and throw that ball down the field right now. I think you gotta you got to try to take a shot. Uh, cover four defense? It looks like they're showing quarters right now. So all, all their uh, corner safeties backing up um, gotcha. and uh, cutting the cutting the field into quarters. Giving a lot of space right there. And here comes. Reverses field. He's got some field. Uh -oh. He's got some room. Oh, He's got some room. There There's we go. A flag down in the backfield, though. We'll see. Oh, wow. I think it's coming back. I see Eric Zoma pointing towards Rancho or Orange Vista side. Oh, that was wow. at the end of the quarter, so they're going to have to run one more play. That's coming back. Yep. Coming back. That's a lot of energy to expend on a play that didn't count. Yeah. 
Preliminary indication it is an illegal block. It is coming back. Wait, we see the referees explaining. I think maybe helmet to helmet. Leading with helmet? I think that's what that means. Okay. I'm not sure. Is that or he's in Cobra Kai? We'll have to ask our <laughs> rule analyst, Jake Shear, at the half. It could be Cobra Kai. That's a signal for Cobra Kai. <laughs> <laughs> I support Daniel Son. Oh man, that hurts. That hurts this rent, this uh, Orange Vista offense because they've been struggling to, to keep the momentum. They've made some big plays, but um, not had any particular success. Maybe throwing the intermediate routes right now. Uh, they have a lot to confer about here in the locker room at halftime. And the they take a knee. Take a knee to end the half. And gentlemen, at the end of the half, we've seen just about everything. Just about. The only thing we haven't seen, a pick six. Well, we had a fumble, a scoop and score by Sire Gaines. And it's been it's been just as we advertised earlier. It's been Sire Gaines and um, um, versus Dylan Riley. But the, the, the thing we got to remember is there's support there. There's linemen blocking for him. At number 55, Matthew threw a great block to spring Sire once. But it's still an incredible game to watch at 27-21. Rancho Verde over Orange Vista at halftime, and we'll be back at the end of the half. We're back here inside the Riverside TV studios. I'm Jason Seip, tech director for the Friday Night Pep Rally, which we'll be bringing to you here in a few hours. Pep Fernandez will be in studio to give you all the updates, the rundowns, and the highlights from week 10 around the CIF Southern section. And it's senior night out there tonight. It was also senior night last night uh, for a couple of teams and for, for a couple of groups. Uh, we'll have those updated standings, see who ended up winning leagues, uh, see, see where teams could possibly be placed uh, for uh, the upcoming uh, playoffs. Pep and Jeff will have more on that here uh, later on tonight on the Friday Night Pep Rally. For now, we're going to take you around and show you some scores uh, that we've seen from the, uh, from the previous nights. So, Andy, let's go ahead and take those up there on the screen. Uh, you can see that last night, Marietta Mesa took on King High School with, and came out up on top 31-14. to 14. We are going to have some highlights from that game. Pep's going to run it down for you. Um, we can take a look at, at that. Next game, Andy. All right, cool. We also had Chaparral taking on Roosevelt. A huge game, 116 points scored in this game. Uh, Chaparral ended up uh, ended up on top, 59-57 uh, at the end there. It finished 7-3, and 6-4. and four. Um, Above some other teams uh, that you typically uh, would, would not think they would be above uh, so far here this particular year. One of those teams would be Norco, which this year was not their year. Um, a goose egg coming up against Centennial. Centennial rocked them 55 to zero. Centennial, uh, five and zero in league uh, play. Uh, ended up taking the big, uh, uh, what, let's see, the, the big, the upper, the upper, big upper, west upper. Uh, big west upper, thank you, uh, uh, for, for their uh, league title. Uh, we'll get to that a little bit later on. Anyway, what's the next team we got? La, uh, La Sierra against Patriot. Uh, Patriot ended up winning 49-14 here, uh, finishing the league three and two. La Sierra this year was not their year. Uh, we'll, looking, uh, we'll be looking forward to them to regroup um, and see what they can come up with next year. We also had CSDR taking on Entrepreneur. CSDR uh, finishes uh, their season. It looks like uh, six and three, two and zero oh in their league. Uh, ended up finishing. Ended up with this game 55-6. Chaparral, as we said, took on Roosevelt. We already got that score. Let's go to the next one there, Andy. Vista Marietta against Marietta Valley. I watched this game last night from the comfortable seat of my couch. A big shout out to the VMHS BNN crew for putting on this particular game. Unfortunately, their Broncos fell short uh, to the Nighthawks, uh, with the Nighthawks uh, finishing 35-21. to uh, Santiago uh, ended up taking on Corona and beat them 55-6. to uh, we already went over the Marietta Mesa and King score, so we're going to go to the next one, and then we're going to bring it right back here in the studio. We already went over La Sierra and Patriot, so we'll come back to more of these scores later on uh, tonight with Cajon uh, taking on Beaumont and winning that game 34 uh, to 30. Uh, we're going to go ahead and head right back on out to Polly against Vista Del Lago. Polly is up 17 to 10 uh, on Vista Del Lago right now. The Ravens, however, got the ball on the kickoff. We're going to jump over to them as they start their drive down the field.
about three. The Pauley Bears in just 24 minutes of action. The Bears had 300 yards of offense, the Ravens 226. So we saw five and a half football fields of offense played in just two quarters tonight in a game between teams that didn't do this much of the season. First completion of the half, your Sims to the outside, and Stokely knocks him out with a late flag down. Might get hit. I should say the Bears might get hit for a masking call on this one. Interesting. Sims with another catch for Vista Del Lago. Yeah, that's what it is. All right, as we sort this out, let's look at the top 25 in this uh, in uh, all of high school football. St. John Bosco is the number three team in the country right now, number one of the state. At the half against Orange Lutheran, they lead their league rival 23-7. to seven. Across the Trinity League, number five, Modern Day, is up on Santa Margarita, 21-7. to seven. Meanwhile, across the, the I-91 in uh, Corona, the Centennial Huskies, yesterday blanked Norco 55-0. This pass is complete to... Fabian Bolanos uh, to the 36 on a gain of nine. And to round out the top 25, Sierra Canyon at the half leads the Eagles of Chaminade 27 to three. And the Sarah Padres up north, they're up on Valley Christian at the half, 14 to seven. That is your look around the, uh, the high school football top 25. A first down run and more for the diving Justin Concepcion a gain of about eight on the ground, and through a minute and a half, the Ravens have two first downs. Tenth first down of the game for Vista Del Lago. From the 45, Concepcion on the ground gains about two. Benitez with the stop. Yeah, Concepcion had 33 yards in that first half of play. Number 24. Justin Concepcion, the ball carrier. That was on six carries. Yeah, this, both clubs, but Vista Del Lago certainly leaned on the services of Larry Joyce much more than the running game of that half. Off a tunnel screen, here goes Camion Sims. He gets a great block. Across the 40 goes Sims. And he's finally knocked down at the Bears 37. Michael Gaines knocked him down. Larry Joyce went 8 of 16 with 122 yards in the first half, added 15 more on the ground. The quarterback has been brilliant, and they come out with a hurry-up offense to begin the third. The Ravens with Concepcion, his ninth run of the night, and it's a strong wow. one. The Bears can't seem to bring him down. First and 10 on a pickup of 14. Now, this is what we saw from Vista Del Lago early in the first quarter, and they've come right back to that same schematic, and that's definitely working for them. Now the Ravens lead the league in scoring, and Justin Concepcion, a big reason why, is he came in the number one tailback in this league with touchdowns, nine of them in as many games. That is oh. all for the hands of the target, and Benitez picks him off. Is that what a, a play. Yeah, it is a pick. Man. Great defensive work. Let's see if we can hopefully get a second chance to look at that one. The receiver dropped the ball, and it caroms right into the hands of the Bears defender. Let's take another look at this one. This, I'm actually wondering if it hit the ground. We'll see what happens here. Not that it'll matter with no review. Ooh. Nope. I'd say clean. Now, obviously, we didn't get the perfect angle as the body went in the way. I'm a little unsure on that one. Right. But they've got it. Off the play fake, Aguilar will take off. Flag on the play. And the fans have, or thinking too, it's holding certainly in the area on that flag. Just the Bears' second flag of the game if it's on Pauly. Yeah, I think there was a little tug on the jersey there. And the officials feel the same way. The Bears went wild in the first half offensively with 300 total yards, led by their quarterback, Victor Aguilar, who went 15 of 19 for 220 yards himself, added 10 more on the ground, and had two touchdowns in the first half, one on the ground and one through the air. A sensational half for Larry or for uh, Victor Aguilar. Only the third flag of the game here for the Bears. By far and away his best half of football in any game all season for Pauly, and it came in a big oh, yeah. spot with the playoffs on the line. 
A little miscommunication between Aguilar and Matthew Henry, incomplete. Incomplete pass intended for number 81. Hey, Henry was not even looking in the same direction as the ball was coming towards his way. A rare miscue from quarterback to receiver as Aguilar was nearly perfect in that first half. And it's amazing to think this is turning into football weather right at the time you'd think the offenses would start to slow down. 60 degrees and a little wind from left to right of the quarterback's face. It's second and long, and Aguilar's throwing anyways, Ooh, nearly man. picked off. <laughs> Devin was, Walker knocks it away. That was close. Take a second look at this one. Wow. Number 10, Joshua Dominguez Wales was the entire target, and he had a fine first half, but not quite as big as Maje Allen, who went four catches for 98 yards, and he split all the way to the right of your screen on a huge third and 20. They'd love to at least move the ball a bit to set up a better punting situation. They'll set up Allen on the screen. He gets by oh, one. Allen goodness. with a block. First down wow. and out at the 34-yard line. Nice execution by now the there pair. there is a flag down on the area of holding. I think they may have gotten a block in the back on that play. Shoved out by Desmond Woods, number three. Yeah, it's coming back. And it's coming wow. back. What a shame. What a shame. Well, the Bears may be the best offense in the country on third downs in 20 yards or more. I mean, we just saw them convert not one, but two of those. One came a yard away, but another one converted by a long shot, and then there they go on third and 20 again. Yeah, you know, it's not like they haven't done this before, <laughs> so this is doable. It almost seems like when their backs are against the wall, that's when they're able to dig into it and come up with something. That's when they feel comfortable in these scenarios. And, you know, they just got experience. It's now third and 19 as they wind up gaining a yard on that penalty. You can see the explosive ability of a senior, Maje Allen. The guy's averaging nearly 20 yards a catch this season and just went for 24 and a half on four grabs in the first half. The Bears' offense could not be stopped in the first two quarters, but they may just be stopped by penalty here in the third. Here's a third and 19 for Aguilar and the offense. Ravens line up in a nickel defense this time. Well, they'll go ground, and Thomas is caught and dropped in the hole by Amir Stevens, number four. Number yeah, seven, trying to James catch the defense off Walker. guard with a draw-type play, and Amir unfortunately Stevens. does not gain the yard as needed here. Now, you know, in JR, I think this is part of your logic to going for deep shots on third and fourth and long. I mean, it'll absolutely rejuvenate and energize a football team if you, you know, go for a big play on a third or fourth and long. And we're side by side now as Ramona Norda Vista gets back underway for the second half. Uh, Polly uh, trying to get their punt off, but it looks like there's a flag on the play. So that won't happen. It was a false start there for, for Polly. Uh, we're going to take a look and see what the Braves are going to be able to do against the Rams. The Rams have been doing a very good job so far of stopping that run up the middle. Uh, so expect to see much more motion uh, put on by Coach Batdorf to try and break up the play a little bit. And again, let's see if they actually go through the air. Um, a couple of times here and there because that seemed to work last time um, and we hope that they actually can uh, get get some pass plays in. So for now we're going to go back full screen, Ramona Norta Vista and listen in to see what happens here as Novich starts their drive down the field. Surging forward for a first down. Looks like Costello the fullback will get it up to the 31 yard line. So Costello with his second carry picks up the first down. And it's old Ken Batdoor football, right? Smash mouth child abuse offense. So run it between the tackles. First down. Bolander with a bootleg. 
Bolander's got some space. Bolander up over the 45-yard line, finally shoved out of bounds. Coming over to make the tackle, Jordan Daniel. All the way up to about the 48-yard line, 17-yard pickup for Bolander. Watch this Bolander get, showing some some angst. Get out of that slide, buddy. But takes a shot. Every last bit of yard as he wanted it. I love that kid. Bolander started at Hillcrest and then transferred to Novi, but wouldn't like you think. There was no guarantee. I mean, he was just a sophomore coming in, and Coach Batdorf said probably the most improved player of the league in the league, largely due to his work ethic, and had a rough game against Capo Valley, but just put the work in. And we see what has happened for Norda Vista. Hand up the middle for Iosefo, get pushed back. He'll surge up to about the 49-yard line on the Ramona side, so give him three yards on the play. Now, we haven't seen Dreddy Elaine in a while, and I'm wondering if something is up with that in terms of an injury, Jeff. I don't even I don't see him even on the sideline. Is he in? I mean, we saw Sola that, you know, you'd think they're going for a score late in that second, uh, the first half, that he would have touched the ball. He did not. They had Fave Sola. And the, the two runs, the three runs we've seen here, Iosefa, Costello, and Henderson kind of doing running back by committee. Yeah, I'm looking on the sidelines. Don't see him. If we had a sideline person, we could figure that out. We'll have to do some detective work ourselves, you know. Cue the Columbo Robert Gorin references. And a whistle. Flags come flying in. While we wait for that particular flag um, on that play, which it looks like it's going to go against the Braves, looks like it's a delay of game. Uh, we are going to head on over to the Poly Vista del Lago game as the Ravens are charging down the field. Let's listen to in Nick Rice. To an open Concepcion who delivers a huge hit on Johnson. No, that's two. Michael Gaines Jr. First down, Vista del Lago. Just the third reception of the night here for Concepcion, but it comes at a good time there to pick up that first down. Joyce on a bootleg. Pressure's coming, and the quarterback oh, goes wow. down. Elijah Ramirez with the sack. I think Ramirez kind of paid for that because he's down on the turf injured now. And he's having a career game for the Bears. A couple of sacks tonight for Ramirez. He had none all year, but it is a big moment for him to step up for that defense. Second sack of the night for the Pauley Bears. Injury timeouts will be happening at the Pauley Vista Del Lago game. So for now, we're going to take you right back on over to Ramona Norda Vista. Don't worry, we haven't forgot about Rancho Verde Orange Vista. Once they come back from halftime, we'll take you in uh, so we can see an updated score and see who's charging on the field there. For now, Novi against Ramona. Braves charging up the field. Gasol Hassan. Still pushing, still driving, still surging inside the 30. No whistle as of yet. He'll get all the way down to the 26-yard line. 16-yard pickup, and Costello carried tacklers for about the last 10, Jeff. I mean, he was that was a scrum, as they'd say in rugby. Look at this. He just carries him. Ken Backdorf, you know, this he has been a big key for us in terms of the short yardage, and now they need him to do a little more. Look at that. You know, four or five defenders with ease. And he's stepping over, guys, stepping on them. Kind of like uh, Chevy Chase in the 1985 classic Fletch. Remember when he played for the Lakers? Yes. <laughs> seven foot, seven two with the Afro. First and ten from the Ramona twenty six. Here's Dreddy. Picking his way up inside on the left side over the twenty to about the nineteen. Seven more yards for Dreddy Elaine. They marked it down to the 20-yard line. Third quarter, and Ken Batdorf kind of going back to the old Novi ways, Jeff, where they can basically 
expire a quarter running the football. Oh, we've seen it before. I mean, they, didn't we have him last year? He ran an entire quarter off on one possession, I think. Costello shuttles into motion. Toss to a lane. Here's the reverse. Henderson fakes the pass. Henderson now to the open field. Henderson on the angle. Breaks a tackle into the end zone. Touchdown, Tajon Henderson. 19-yard jaunt to Paydirt. Touchdown, Norda Vista. Man, that was a, I mean, he ran right into it. Kind of that stupid. 23 to 7, although that might be coming back here in a second as there's a flag on that play. On the right hand side of your screen, you should see Vista Del Lago and Polly, the, uh, the Ravens, kicking a field goal. The kick is up from about 35 yards out, and it is good. So that game tightens up just a little bit 17 13. Uh, Polly Vista Del Lago with a little bit less than four minutes to go in the third quarter. Um, as you can see right now, we're still waiting to see what that flag was. And it looks like the, fa the, the foul was on the Rams. So we're going to stay in a double box for right now as they get ready to kick the extra point. Uh, Novi, that is. It gets ready to kick their extra point on the left-hand side of your screen. Don't worry for everyone uh, wanting to check out the Rancho Verde Orange Vista game. Still at halftime. Senior night. Still having their halftime show occurring. So there'll be a little bit before we get back to them. That score, though, is still 27-21. Kick is up by the Braves. The extra point is actually good. Um, Andy, let's go ahead and go to a triple box if we can here so we can take a look in at what's happening for, uh, from our friends there at Teen Vision TV 16 in the Valverde School District. Yep, still bringing down our seniors uh, down the red carpet for senior night. It is senior night all around Southern California celebrating our uh, football players in their 2023 fall football season. Uh, for now, though, we're going to go ahead and head back on up to the Vista Del Lago Poly game where the Bears just returned the kickoff up to their own 36 and are getting ready to go back on offense. Nick Rice on the call. Asking call as well. We'll see what happens. Right. Maddox Long was on the return for the Bears. So the Bears, which I believe only had one flag all first half, now wind up potentially with another one here. Great football game tonight. But the Bears, who have been stagnant in the second half. Yeah, legal block. Right. Suffer a huge blow with the penalty. Seventh flag of the night here for the Bears. Excuse me, sixth flag of the night. I think you got three. That was my last count. Six on the Ravens, three on the Bears, something like that. As Thomas sweeps to his left and is spilled at about the 23-yard uh, line. Jay Sean Thomas and Justin Concepcion, two of the premier running backs in the area, let alone the Sun Belt League. And both have run the ball well given their limited opportunities. And I'd say the Bears, not a bad idea to go back to their bread and butter and run the football with Thomas. Yeah, absolutely. I think from a standpoint of being uh, in control of the clock, this would behoove them. Uh, another flag. I think the motion man stepped up a little too yeah, early that time. Yep, sure full did. start. Yep. Izzy Morales. Full start against the Bears. And that will wipe out all of the yardage gained on the Thomas run. It's second down with 315 to play in the third. The Bears have yet We are to watching the Rams march down the field against the Braves, not taking too kindly to the Braves scoring seven points just a couple moments ago. If you take a look at this uh, run up the field here by Ramona's quarterback, wide open uh, number, uh, for number nine to get up to Novi's 35-yard line. We're also keeping an eye again on the Ravens and the Bears, which looks to go into timeout. So for now, we're going to go back live at Ramona Norte Vista. Spins down inside the 20. Giant and Henderson combining on the tackle there. Yeah, great move there from Tolbert. 15 yards for Sincere Tolbert. 
He now has 33 yards on seven carries. They did a really good job on him in the first half. So from the 18, it's a first and 10 for Ramona. Valence will at the top of the screen marched, matched up with Henderson. Acosta will take it himself. No such luck this time. A trio of Braves there. Right in front of there is Damon Iosefa. Acosta getting up a little slow that time. Iosef earlier this year, Jeff, was the Sports Illustrated Defensive Player of the Week. That was when they played John Muir. You know, Muir had a couple of D1 yeah. prospects there on the team. Wait, he was in Sports Illustrated? And Iosefa stood little out. little picture in there? I don't know. It was just the SI Player of the Week. That's all I know. Remember, you'd get that Sports Illustrated? Faces in the crowd. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Two-yard pickup for Acosta, second and eight. I'm surprised magazines still exist. I think, it's, I think it's mostly online. Acosta looking for Valenzuela one-on-one. Valenzuela up. Nice play. Henderson on the coverage. It'll be third down. And Valenzuela yet to get that big play. Just three completions for Acosta. They've done a nice job, meaning Novi, shutting down this passing game. A lot of that's been the pressure they've been able to apply to Jeremy Acosta. Now, Acosta has adjusted. He's run the ball. Four carries, 64 yards, but the air, aerial attack was big for Ramona coming promised, in. They were we promised 100. you guys that we'd go back and check in on Rancho Verde and Orange Vista. We're just kicking off their second half. The Mustangs are up 27-21 on the Coyotes. Uh, the bottom left, or sorry, the top left-hand corner of your screen. The Rams moving downfield, trying to get a quick score. Doesn't look to happen, so that'll set up fourth down there. In the upper right-hand corner of your screen, you can take a look and see that it looks like the Bears are trying to get out of their own end, move their way down the field against the Ravens. Back to pass, throw over the middle. Not really a throw going anywhere, taking down about the 15-yard line. Uh, for now, we're going to go ahead and check back in with our friends. Uh, well, actually, you know, we're going to stay triple box really quickly because Ramon is going to try and attempt to kick a field goal here uh, to get this back into a two-score game. The kick is up, and it is good uh, for the Rams. That brings the score there, 24-10. to 10. For now, we're going to go back and check in on the Mustangs and Coyotes and see what they have going on for the second half with our friends over at Teen Vision. Uh, sorry, we have second down and three. Orange Vista with the ball. Uh, Aziz in a shotgun formation. Fake the handoff to Anderson. Aziz on the run. Brought down on a great play by Nehemiah Jones. Nehemiah Jones, number 10 for Rancho, if I read that right. I hope I'm reading the right number. Um, is a great linebacker, and his brother graduated last year. But uh, Rancho Verde is showing some great discipline there as they stick with this, uh, not letting Aziz get out of the pocket. Let's check that replay. Did I write on the note? It was number 40. I read the number wrong. I don't have a number uh, 40 on our roster. 40, but, uh, 48. 48. Okay, 48 was? Donovan, Donovan Dearden. Dearden. Okay, Donovan Dearden on the, on the uh, tackle. Don't worry, Tim. 48 is close to 10, though. You were... Only off by a little bit. Uh, so, um, <laughs> Mr. McCormick, just is there with all the teams and things that have gone on? Citrus Hill won a state championship. Uh, there's been several CIF championships from Rancho, from Citrus, uh, and and now hopefully in the near Lots future from time to pass. And he gets hit as he passes. Oh, almost, almost intercepted off by number 45. I saw that number, number 45, <laughs> Ty Tylen Allen, who's a great linebacker in the tradition of Rancho Verde linebackers. Um, is there a certain team or a certain uh, individual that stands out to you from your time? You know, I'm thinking about when, when I was principal at Rancho, and this was back in the early 2000s, um, the first CIF championship actually came in track. Mm -hmm. The second one came in boys basketball. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had some incredible teams and some incredible players from back in the day. Uh, and some so because some of those were the first mm -hmm. for the school at right. Rancho Verde, I think those are the ones that, that I remember and just the impact it made on the campus. Is that the Michael Snare group? That was. It sure was. And uh, on the punt, Orange Vista 
in the rugby style punt. Let's the ball die at the 45 five yard. yard line where Rancho Verde will take over with some great field position and Dylan Riley and company ready to take over. Um, Michael Snare, Tyrone Fuller, um, that group played in our tournaments and I got to see them up close and that was That's right, because you were coaching basketball over at Citrus, That's right? right. Yep. Yep. And still trying again. Yeah. Oh, are you? <laughs> yeah, okay, back wonderful. In <laughs> back, in, back in the game. <laughs> yes. Um, can't no, stay away. Can't stay yeah, away. Yeah, no, that's but, awesome. Um, so uh, looking forward, we have Orange Vista, whose football and basketball teams are athletically are competing. And, and as, a, as a district, we're ri the, the level is rising. As John Simon used to say, a rising tide raises all no ships. ships. That's right. So um, uh, we'd like to thank you for coming in and spending some time with us. And uh, we'll let you get back to enjoying the game. And um, it's a pleasure to actually meet and talk to you. And you Absolutely. look great in the suit, sir. Well, you know, it's Good a big day. We got a big game happening tonight. You know, two incredible programs, mm -hmm. two incredible coaches. Yes. I was out there at the beginning of the game for the coin toss mm -hmm. with Coach's mom. Okay. And, you know, just I think that reinforces the family atmosphere. Absolutely. Here we have two brothers coaching opposing teams. Mom's out supporting her sons yep. at every game. Yes. We're out there. It's just, it's a great time. So I, I really appreciate the invitation. And I'm grateful for you guys doing such an incredible job with Teen Vision, um, making and, this available for the whole community. And the incomparable Johnny Nunez. Did you oh. know John Nunez was a championship clogger in the 1984 Olympics? No, I did not know that. <laughs> not that's, many people That's do. a little known fact. Yeah, it's a nugget of information. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. McCormick. All it's right, you guys, thanks so pleasure much. Appreciate it. All righty, here's your sets back. We're going to take a look at all three games that are currently happening right now here on the Friday Night Pep Zone. We have Ramona Norda Vista in the upper left-hand corner of your screen. The upper right-hand corner of your screen, Vista Del Lago against Pauly. In the bottom part of your screen, we have Rancho Verde and Orange Vista. Um, all games are within a couple of scores. We have a lot of stuff kind of going on. Right now, nothing much going on out, out in the field as, as uh, teams are getting in and, and to figure out their strategy to try and figure out what they're going to do here. Um, as we get closer to the end of the third quarter, uh, we're going to take a look here at Pauly Vista Del Lago and see how they're going to finish out the quarter. Pauly with a quick check down pass, screen pass, and that will take us to the end of the third quarter there. Pauly up 17 13. Uh, down again at the bottom part of your screen. Uh, right now, the Mustangs are charging down the field against the Coyotes, who are up 27 to 21. But for now, we're going to go back and go full screen uh, for our game at Riverside TV Game of the Week, Ramona versus Norda Vista. That score is 24 to 10. Novi, who is charging down the field, Gasol Hassan. Kobe Batdorf, second down. Ball back to the 35, Bollinger to throw. The throw to the outside. I think it was deflected. It falls incomplete. Pressure coming up the middle for Ramona. I think that was Tavin Mesa up the middle, a sophomore. Both these teams have some young guys who I think are going to be good next year and the year after. Bolander goes to throw. Oh, and yeah. nobody, he didn't get tipped. He was actually, there's contact. It's a third down coming up. So the Mamba. The Mamba. You know the real story behind that, right? Is that. Uh, the initial Black Mamba was DeAnthony Thomas, who ended up playing at Oregon. He was on Snoop Dogg's Pop Warner team. And Snoop had named him the Mamba before Kobe took the Mamba. Third and ten coming up. Pump fake. Bollander looking. Thrown to the near side. Complete to Tejon Henderson. The first down inside midfield of the 48-yard line of Ramona. That was, so that's a 12-yard pickup, a nice catch. That's the Henderson, actually. That's, yeah, number six. Julian Reyes makes the catch. So there's the pump from Bollander looking to the near side. and Nice footwork there. Flings it. Great catch. With the hood and all. 12-yard pickup. I think you should put the hood over his helmet. I think that'd look cool. So Bollander now 7 for 11 through the air. That's the first catch on the night for Reyes. First and ten, line is the 48 of Ramona. Toss to a lane and runs right into the hands of Angel Torres. Maybe lose a yard on the play. But, yeah, and then Anthony Thomas, eventually I think he went by the whole enchilada from La Mirada. That was his thing, and then he went up to Oregon. 
And obviously Snoop's a big Laker fan. He's not going to say anything. No, yeah, who's going to argue with the Mamba? But now Ken Batdorf is the Mamba. He's the Mamba. (laughs) Clock ticking down to the end of the third quarter. I think Notre Vista. Three games all standing around. We're going to wait right now. Two flags in two different games. The poly game is going backwards. Uh, It'll still be fourth down there for, I believe, the Ravens. We're also going backwards again for Orange Vista against the Mustangs. But going forwards, it looks like we have uh, the Braves uh, against the Rams in the upper left-hand corner of your screen. We'll see what ends up coming out. Uh, here uh, of these games, but it's a uh, uh, right now we're getting down to crunch time. Uh, fourth quarter on uh, at the Poly game, uh, about to be fourth quarter now for the Ramona game, and uh, we're midway through the third quarter down at Rancho Verde versus Orange Vista, who pushes up the middle. Might be enough, and it is uh, for a first down. Okay, for now, we're actually going to go head back over to our friends at Teen Vision and see what it is that they have going on at their game. Orange Vista driving down the field. I'll have to, where's it? Get the thesaurus. Get the, 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 how do you say I don't it? use the thesaurus. The thesaurus. The thesaurus. So, what, what Jimmy's trying to say is that the line is being worn down by that uh, Orange Vista offensive line. Just look at the size. They just got a lot of size up front right now with that Orange Vista offensive line. I mean, Rancho Verde has some some decent size as well, but you know they've been running the ball very successfully up front for this Orange Vista offense. But if that's constantly coming at you hard, coming at you, coming at you, coming at you, um, eventually you will wear down. And there is some bulk to that line, but you know what? The other thing about their line is they're bulky, but they move. Much like my wife. All right, timeouts all around in all three of our games. Again, if you can, tune in tonight for the Friday night pep rally beginning at 11 o'clock. Pep Fernandez in here with Jeff Gorham. Going to give you a quick rundown of all things CIF Southern section, especially out here in the Inland Empire. Talk about who won league championships. Talk about who, where maybe teams will be seated for playoffs beginning next week. All that's going to come uh, here uh, on the Friday night pep rally here tonight. For now, uh, we're going to go head on back on over to the start of the fourth quarter, Ramona versus Norta Vista, um, as they're driving down the field. Halloween this year. I'm hanging out with the Gorham boys. I'm yeah, going to come on over. Out. Come on over and hang out. I, got, I have fog machines. I have spiders all over my house. I sit there all night long and I hand out thousands so, of people I, i'll pull up the curtain a little bit i really wanted it was my bad I, just, I didn't have time this week i wanted to have the cast of the pep rally dress as gilligan's island that would have been great yeah second and six here's the toss this is henderson dancing outside henderson 30 25 and jordan daniel waiting for him there he'll step out of bounds at about the 23 yard line 10 more yards for Tejon Henderson. Oh, I had it all set up. I was going to get you the blue polo shirt and the skipper hat. I was going to get Pep the red shirt and the Gilligan hat. And I was going to get uh, either Jason Sepp or Kona the white shirt to dress as the professor. I was hoping to be Ginger. But I was going to say, we're going to get some, some wigs and stuff. Yeah, we need uh, <laughs> we need to diversify a little bit with the cast. Ginger Grant. Tina Louise, who's still alive, by the way. She is? Yeah. Uh, she's still cute. Still a little bit. She's probably close to 90, but she's, a, she's an attractive lady, of course. <laughs> she's close to, she probably is close to 90. I, th- I think it was like 86 or 87. There's, is she the only one left? She is. I think she's the only one alive, yeah. No. Sadly. No Jim Backus. Mr. Magoo. First and 10 from the 23. Yeah, that guy, he's lost. He doesn't know where he is. Velasco, well, to be give, to be fair, he's been playing guard all year, and then I got him playing tight end. Here's the tossed Fave Sola wrestling forward. He'll have a first down up to the 10-yard line, 13 yards. For- We're going side-by-side Rancho Verde Orange Vista with, alongside Ramona Norta Vista. Both teams are in the red zone looking for some points here. Uh, Novi looking to capitalize and go up by more than two scores, versus, whereas Orange Vista is looking to come back and tie the game and possibly go ahead by a single point. For those of you that missed it a little bit earlier, Rancho Verde missed their extra point after their third touchdown earlier in the first half. 
Um, so this game will be very, very interesting to see what it comes down to. If it does end up coming down to that extra point, huge miss hit. Uh, it'll be there for the Mustangs. Uh, but again, if you look uh, on the left side of your screen, the Mustangs are about to drive in. The Braves run the ball up the middle, get down to about the five-yard line. That should be enough to start uh, first and goal. Uh, otherwise, Orange Vista moving in for the touchdown. Was it a touchdown? Are they going to call it a touchdown? Are we thinking about it? No declaration, no signal. Andy, do we have anything? I'm assuming yes, it is a touchdown. They're moving over the sidelines as they are, but I didn't see it. There's the indication finally now from our friends at Teen Vision that it was in fact an Orange Vista touchdown. That ties up the game. Uh, we're still watching uh, the Braves on the right-hand side of your screen to see if they can punch it in. And they signal. Signal, touchdown for the Norta Vista Braves. Right there, that'll allow them to go up by three scores again. Again, Orange Vista tied it on this run, and it looks like, again, he barely made it in there. Uh, some of them wanted to call it down, but not, but yeah, definitely, definitely in there in the end zone for a touchdown for Orange Vista. Uh, as we go back, let's take a look and see if they're going to kick that extra point. They did. They're up now 28-27. Um, let's go triple box, Andy, and pull up what's happening in the poly game. Uh, the Ravens are moving down the field, not very far, getting just past their 30. Um, as we take a look at Ramona Norta Vista, the Braves kicking their extra point. The kick is up. And it is, survey says, it is definitely good uh, there for the Braves. Uh, for now, we're going to go ahead and stay here. Triple boxes. The, the Ravens are moving off the field, getting ready to punt at their particular game. There's going to be a kickoff happening down at the Rancho Verde game. And there's going to be a kickoff happening at the Ramona Norda Vista game. Onside kick for, uh, for Orange Vista. Very interesting play right there. However, it looks like the ball is going to go to the Mustangs. They'll have pretty good field position right around midfield. Uh, a little bit of trickery happening there from Orange Vista. Definitely unexpected um, for everyone except apparently the, uh, the, the Mustangs uh, on that particular play. We're going to still stay uh, wide here. Again, a uh, quick little shout out. Friday night pep rally tonight at 11 p.m. For everyone that wants to know the outcome of the Ivy League, the River Valley League, uh, we'll have all of those standings as well as possibly some highlights from each of those games uh, so you know what's happening out here in Riverside this particular week. Um, and for now, we're going to go back down to the or uh, Rancho Verde Orange Vista game where the Mustangs throw the ball up into the air and it is intercepted. Go, Andy. It back. Returns it. Right Back down to? at about the 44-yard line. Yes. That's a big play. Uh, Burpee threw that one up for grabs. And unfortunately, the guy going back there deep for Rancho Verde was a Jerry Smidget. There's Ivan Lopez right there, a former Citrus Hill guy. I don't know if you saw him on the coaching staff. Did you see him? I don't know if I did. You know who he is? Yes, I do. Big play by Anthony Himes. You know, and he had taken a, he he had taken some heat on the sideline from his teammates for uh, giving up that fade in the first half, and you know, getting a couple penalties uh, for unsportsmanlike conduct. But uh, it seems like he he's getting the momentum back for his team right now. And you love to see that a guy bounce back from uh, maybe not making the not ma not making the best plays or not making the smartest plays. But uh, at the end of the day, the playmakers will make plays for their teams, and that's what you love to see. So, I mean, you might say he bounced back from adversity. He did. Adversity meaning bad things. Whoa. Jesse Anderson met pretty strongly there by, can't see the number, number four. Nehemiah Chenault from Rancho Verde. Rancho Verde's still playing. Rancho Verde's still hitting. Rancho Verde's still popping. But right now, Rancho Verde's defense has to make a stand. But you can see hands on hips right there. You see some chins to the chest a little bit. Look at another hands on hips. They're a little tired. Uh, they didn't <laughs> didn't have much time off to rest at all. No. Yeah, I think right now is a good time to pound the rock between the tackles. Chew up some clock time, wear down this defense even more. 
Sire Gaines on the carry. Sire Gaines still going. Sire Gaines carrying people. Carrying people. Nehemiah Jones, the tough linebacker from, uh, from Rancho Verde, got carried about five yards by Sire Gaines. Yeah, and that's a great play call. Watch his hit. Number 98 missed him. Look at him. He carried him about five yards. I feel like that was number 20 on the big hit right there. He's going to feel that one tomorrow. Oh, Nehemiah is still down. It might be a cramp. Looks like it's a cramp. Injury time out there for that Rancho Verde Orange Vista. So we're going to take you uh, three aside right here. Uh, the Ramona game is a little bit of a runway, runaway for Norta Vista, up by three touchdowns and three scores there. Poly Vista Del Lago game is a little bit closer, and we're getting down to crunch time there very closely. Uh, uh, Rams were back to throw and ends up getting taken down for about a 20-yard loss. That's not something that Coach Mushinsky is going to be too happy about. Um, and then, of course, uh, uh, our friends over at Team Vision, we thank you guys for allowing us to uh, take a look at your game and drop in side by side alongside of you uh, as that injury timeout is, uh, was occurring. 28-27 down there, uh, Orange Vista up and with the ball with about a minute and a half to go in the third quarter. Uh, each of our other games are down to the final five minutes, it looks like, in the fourth quarter. For now, we're going to go take a look at Pauly uh, Vista Del Lago as the Bears charge down the field to see if they can get some more yards. I mean, the Bears, they could run as much clock as they want, but they really need another couple first downs. And, first. you know, think about it, Pauly on third and long. They've been perfect tonight. We'll see if they do it again. Yeah, both teams have all timeouts left, so it'll be uh, getting down to clock management here in just a bit. Have we mentioned the, uh, the pep rally yet? Yeah, that's right. That's the right. pep rally tonight. Now... Let's see how they do on third and 13. There'll be a lot to rally and pep yeah. about with a conversion here. Well, I think maybe a timeout finally. No. Delay a game. Oh, Against delay of game. game. Interesting. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, the penalties have really hurt this football team in the second half. Oh, the Bears have really struggled with flags here in the second half. Right. So the pep rally, you brought it up. This is a, a, a Riverside TV broadcast where we break down every score and every playoff scenario from across the southern section in the Inland Empire on the pep rally at 11 p.m. Pacific. Wow. Aguilar is taken down for a critical sack with three minutes left to go. That's Sevion Lonzo with the pressure with 3.04 to play, and I think a timeout's been called. Man, that comes at a crucial time here for the Ravens. Yep, yes, timeout Vista Del Lago. We're going to go Stops back to here to uh, all, take a look at all three games. There's an injury timeout happening in the Rancho Verde Orange Vista game. You'll see the, the player kind of goes down, grabs his ankle and his leg, has not gotten back up. So we'll get an update there here in a second. Vista Del Lago versus Polly is also in timeout with about three minutes to go in the fourth quarter. And the Ramona Norte Vista game has a flag as they're trying to work out the situation, see what ended up happening there. Looks like the Braves are still marching down the field. We're getting a quick little replay to see kind of what happened and what went on, what went on there. Uh, don't really notice anything. Might have been a hold uh, on the uh, on the Braves there right before he got out of bounds. Oh, a little bit of a late hit there too. Uh, but for now, what we're going to do is we're going to go back live, Norta Vista Ramona, and take a look and see what Novi can do here in the final minutes of their game. Bollander throwing to the outside. Incomplete. Henderson, the intended receiver. No, it's number six. The numbers are all goofy on that. Can't see him. I know, like John Cena can't see me. Instead, Julian Reyes. I know Ineola Olawui was on the coverage for Ramona, though. Second down. 31 10 here, Braves. You know, Ramona had a big year last year. They had a big win against Novi in week nine last year. They won the league title. But getting back, you know, not only has Ken Batdorf, if he wins today, it'll be six league titles in eight years, he will have been perfect through the league five of those times. The one time he wasn't was that wacky 2017. 
when yeah. everybody was three and two except yeah. for Harupa Valley. Harupa Valley got second place. Yeah. It's the high best they did in the River Valley League ever. <laughs> Here's the handoff inside. Not much there. That was Henderson. Clock continues to move. And the difference tonight, Jeff, the playmakers for Norda Vista. Three touchdowns, Dreddy Elaine, and a touchdown for Tajon Henderson. That's been the difference. And the defense has really held Ramona in check. You know, the, one of the things you can talk about is with this uh, Norda Vista team is they've been healthy all season long for the most part. Mm-hmm. I think it's all due to their great trainer, Daisy Ramirez, who you met before the game. Oh, she, what a nice lady. Yeah, great. Best student we ever had here at Norda Vista. And she's a cutie pie, and she's a wonderful trainer and really has kept these these guys uh, healthy and injury-free for the most part. Third down, Boner looking down the field, looking for Henderson, incomplete double coverage. Royce Mendoza there, help over top from Michael Perez. Fourth down coming up. Clock stops with 6.47 to play in the fourth quarter. Norda Vista trying to wrap up a nine-game win streak here. They lost their opener at Capo Valley. They have won eight straight, trying to make it nine. They got a scare last week. You know, I talked to Ken Batdorf this week. He's usually very happy, very jovial. He was ornery. He, he was? wasn't happy about the Patriot game. No. So we weren't very good. We didn't play very well. We made too many mistakes. We weren't concentrating. There he is. Ken Batdorf. Still coaching. He's up three touchdowns, still coaching. Look at him being. He's Henry right there. Did you see him? Yeah. Oh. Here's the punt. I think this is the first punt of the night from Roman Price for Norda Vista. I think Roman Price wants that one back. Can we redo that? Yeah, 16-yard kick officially, and Price had come in averaging 34 yards. He had two punts. He had his best game last week. Where he averaged 44 yards on two kicks. In fact, had his season long with 49. And Ken Batter said, you know, he was kind of a defensive player. And he came out, was punting the ball, and I saw the ball, and I said, hey, who's that guy punting? And it was Roman Price. That's how he won the job. Let's see if he can actually punt in a football situation. And it turns out he could. 90 seconds left at Van Buren and Wood. The Bears, 17. The Ravens, 13. Wow. Huge win if Polly can hold on. Tolbert up the middle. Tolbert surges forward close to a first down, about nine yards on the play. Still trying to break away, but he was ruled down. Keeping an eye on all three games right now. This is the fourth quarter is starting between the Coyotes and Mustangs, 28-27. Coyotes are up there. Timeout was called in the Polly Vista Del Lago game that Gasol was just mentioning there. Uh, Polly uh, is up 17 to 13. Um, and of course, the Braves, you've been watching up on the Rams as the Rams continue to try to move downfield to try and get anything um, happening here. Uh, we're going to be with you through the end, uh, at least of the uh, Nord Vista Ramona game. That Polly Vista Del Lago game is getting close. So for now, we're going to jump back over to that game so you can take a look at the last 90 seconds and see what they're going to do there. Nick Rice. was enormous favorites tonight. Maybe not by way of the Bears faithful. They, I'm sure, felt that this was a game. But, I mean, Vista Del Lago from week one to week And wouldn't luck have it that they go right to timeout as we go to them. So the, uh, the Rams are still rushing down the field, made it inside the 40-yard line, uh, was called down by contact, did not look to actually be down there. Um, they're stri- still trying to go through it. Uh, what we missed, though, uh, on our side when we went to go to the poly game was Orange Vista scoring again. Now up 34-27, looking to tack on that extra point, and it looks like that they do. 35-27, the Coyotes are now up on the Mustangs. We'll see, that, uh, we'll see what happens after that kickoff on the way back. Kind of was able to bull rush it in there to get that particular touchdown. Uh, for now, though, again, we're going to go back to the Poly Vista Del Lago game. We'll see what the Bears can do here in the last 90 seconds. Flag on the play. No, False procedure. start. Wow. Did not come at a opportune the time there for the Bears. Say the least. 
First down wins the game and gives you a shot for the playoffs, and I'd say a good shot for the playoffs. But of course, nothing's official until Sunday in the CIF. Second and 12, here's Thomas, a good idea to feature him, and he powers his way close, a gain of about six. One of the first there, Junior Willie really Johnson. Sean, Looks like the final timeout taken Time here by Vista Del Lago. I think the game plan's pretty and uh, Rancho Verde taking the ball down the field, makes it back to about their own 29-yard line. The Mustangs looking to come back here and get at least one more score here in the next couple of minutes to make it, a, uh, make it an even closer and tighter game. Rams still looking for something, anything uh, to kind of hold on to against the Norte Vista Braves. Uh, the game was close for a little while, and then Novik ended up stepping up, kind of pulling away a little bit. Um, so it is now 31-10 to 10 in that game with about three minutes left. Rams are back, throwing towards the end zone, hoping for something and nothing. The Braves intercept the ball, heading back down the field, and that will they will look to close this game out pretty quickly here at Norta Vista. That'll be a great way to end the season for the Braves, who are looking to win their ninth straight game. That'll lead them to a higher seating in the playoffs uh, to see what they can do. For now, though, again, we're going to go back over to the Poly Vista de Lago game and listen to Nick Rice. And here's Thomas inside, and the Ravens do a good job limiting him to two, and they cannot call timeout. Yeah, they just need to run the clock down as far as they can go on number this seven, one. Sean, Thomas Larry and Sewell with the stop. Eight, yeah. So the Sewell. next snap can be at about 30 seconds for Pauly. Not seeing a kicking crew come out here. Yep. This is how they got here, fourth and five for the Pauly Bears. A chance to etch themselves in recent Pauly lore, a team that has faced years of, you know, being in a tough league and just missing out on the postseason a few times. The Bears trying to get the bad taste out of their mouth of missing the postseason by a game a year ago. So the Bears will take a timeout, have a little bit of discussion with Coach Gilbert. Right, a chance to turn things around and to do it in the finale against this type of team special all three games are in time out here at the moment so we're going to come back in here take a look and see what's going on with the Rancho Verde Orange Vista game you can see the Mustangs broke it outside got a pretty good run down uh, the sideline ended up taking it out but there is a stoppage of play um, the Braves in the upper left hand corner are looking just to close out this game against the Rams you'll see them kind of just do a quick little rush up the middle uh, to try and take some more time off the clock there uh, but it's really interesting to see what Polly's going to do here against uh, against Vista Del Lago. For those of you that have been following, right now it is Polly's ball. It is fourth down at about the the 20 uh, sorry yeah the 26 yard line with the Bears charging closer towards the red zone. It is about fourth and six. So we'll see what they end up doing on this particular play. It could be a field goal uh, attempt. And that looks to be what the Bears are going to do. If not, this Del Lago is going to be taking it back over um, to have a chance at going down the field for, for a win. Uh, another timeout, of course, is called there by the Ravens. Uh, so we're going to take a look uh, here and just keep it three, uh, three, uh, three games. Triple box going. The Novi uh, rushing up the gut again. Uh, taking it up just to uh, Ramona's side of the 50. There's about 90 seconds left in that game. Rancho Verde now ha heading back, getting ready to throw. Didn't quite get there. Slides in. That'll end up being, I believe, third down and about eight uh, for the Mustangs, who need to score here to kind of keep things a little bit more in check. Um, so we'll just keep, uh, again, keep taking a look at it here, find out who's going to be doing what. Uh, the Rams play, gave a Notre Vista a very good run tonight, but it looks like they're going to fall short. Uh, for now, though, we're going to go back live to the Poly Vista Del Lago game and see if we can finish this and close it out. Did they ice Poly's kicker, Nick Rice? You know, I think a couple of Bears fans could push it over the 10,000 yeah. mark. And it looks like Samoski is now back to the sidelines. Right. Fourth and five, this to set up a playoff spot for the Bears. It all comes down to this. To think you prep all throughout training camp and summer camp and throughout the preseason. I mean, this was a year in the making for the Pauly Bears after losing out by a game last season. Here we go, fourth down and five yards to go. 
They clinch it right here. They're going to throw the football. Oh, my good pass to Allen oh, to win the football goodness. game. <laughs> that was a gutsy call. An absolute gutsy call. Victor Aguilar was the hero of the first half. Throws the beauty to Allen, and that wins the football wow. game for Pauly. <laughs> the Bears pull off one of the biggest upsets of not just the year of Riverside TV history. My goodness, what a football game. The Pauley High School Bears alive and well in the playoff chase now. What a well-executed game plan by the Bears to come up with a victory tonight. This was such a crucial game. This now positions them for a potential CIF bid coming this weekend. Bear hugs everywhere. Jerron Gilbert, who helped turn around Harupa Valley a few years ago, joins the storied, successful, long tradition-laden program of Pauley High School, trying to turn this bad boy into a playoff winner. And he did his job late in this year one. Hey, As the Bears started one and six, and JR, they're sniffing the playoffs now, and they'll know on Sunday. Man, congrats to Coach Gilbert. I mean, for such a great game plan and for also really turning things around here in the latter part of this 23 season. And that's how the regular season comes to an end. Hard to compartmentalize how we start the year with one of the great games of the season between North and Ramona. You just saw the, the CIF upset zone. here on the Friday Night Pep Zone. For those of you that were tuning in, the Riverside Poly Bears knocking off the Vista Del Lago Ravens, 17 to 13. That is a final score. In the upper left-hand corner of your screen, Norta Vista just got done knocking off the Ramona Rams, 31 to 10. Uh, down at the bottom of the screen is Rancho Verde versus Orange Vista. Um, and that game, if you want to keep watching, is available over on Teen Vision. If you go to ondemand.valverde.edu, you will be able to see that. Uh, but that is going to be it, it looks like, for us tonight on the Friday Night Pep Zone. We got a show to prep. Uh, we got a sh we got a show where we're gonna go over all the scores, all the highlights from all of these games. Some of which you're seeing right now up here on your screen. Uh, we're gonna have Pep Fernandez here in studio along with Jeff Gorham. They're gonna break down all the scores and highlights from Week 10. Talk about what teams did what, what possible seedings we may see on Sunday uh, when CIF uh, ends up releasing their rankings in their seatings, I should say, uh, um, to, to the public. It'll be very interesting to see what ends up coming out uh, for that. Uh, my tech director, Andy Lopez, I appreciate it. Thank you for all that you've done here tonight as we continue to prep the pep, uh, the pep, Friday Night Pep Rally while also doing this particular show. It's been a huge uh, undertaking for us here for the last couple of weeks, um, but it's been really, really fun. For those of you that have tuned in uh, uh, alongside us to watch all three of these games uh, here tonight, we thank you, uh, and we look forward to showing you some more uh, football, playoff football here on Riverside TV in the coming weeks. Uh, for now, I'm Jason Seip. I will see you guys next time on the Friday Night Pep Zone. Take care, everybody. Hit it, Andy.